Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sean Atkins. At this time, I'd like to call to order our regularly scheduled July 21st, 2020 meeting. Uh, staff, would you please sound roll call to establish a quorum? Ms. Solomon, I think you're- Sorry, are, I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll try it again. All Staff, right. would you please sound roll call to establish a quorum? Commissioner Atkins. Present. Commissioner Presley. Apologies, uh, present. I was on mute. Commissioner Fan. Commissioner Fan, you might be on mute. Uh, let's see, where is he? I know that he was on. Okay, we'll have to come back. Commissioner Lovett. Present. Commissioner Mark Fields. Present. Commissioner Miller. Commissioner Miller, you're on mute. Could you please unmute? Excuse me. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McKnight. Present. Commissioner Bryan. Present. Commissioner Joseph Fields. Here. Yeah. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Okay, thank you so very much. Um, I would like to see what happened to Commissioner Fan because I did see him log on. And for the record to reflect that he is present, I would need for him to sound present. Um, let's see here if we can find him. Do you see him in the audience? Um, I wanna make sure that he's a panelist. I do not see him as an attendee. You do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just one second, please. We do have a quorum, as has been stated by staff. So we're going to go ahead and get our meeting started, and hopefully Commissioner Fan will be able to join us at such time. I'll make sure that Commissioner Fan sounds present or here to acknowledge and for the record to reflect that he actually is a part of this meeting and this proceeding. So we'll move to our next agenda item. And um, ladies and gentlemen, if you would at this time, please join us in observing a moment of silence. All right, thank you. This time, commissioners, our agenda has been sent out to us earlier this week, and I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields, that we adopt the agenda as presented. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The agenda is adopted as presented. Commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve our June 16th meeting minutes. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Presley, that we approve our June 16th meeting minutes. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Here none, the ayes have it. Our June 16 meeting minutes are approved. Next on the agenda would be our old business. And we've got two cases under old business. Before we move on to our old business, I would just like to also mention as it relates to our meeting minutes, um, Ms. Alexander, if we do not have a quorum once I start, um, we don't need to take minutes until we do have a quorum. And so just wanted to make you aware of that, 
just in case we have a situation like that. So we will only capture the verbatim minutes um, from the time that we do have a quorum, okay? Okay, perfect, thank you. Our first case on the old business is 2022, C is in Charlie, P is in Paul, A is in Apple, that's 001. Dash zero 02. The applicant is the city of Peace Point. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Greetings and, sal and salutations, everyone. I am Trey John Singletary, CEO planner for the city of East Point. Uh, for old business item number one, we have case number 2022 CPA-001-02. The applicant, City of East Point, location, citywide. Description, the amendments of the City of East Point compare some plan updates, 2017 community goals section to incorporate the Willingham Corridor Study. Case type, amendment, and staff will present this case. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singletary. This agenda item does require a public hearing um, and has been properly advertised. Is that correct, staff? It's been advertised. Okay. Thank you. At this time, I will read our rules for public hearings. They will apply for all of the cases that require a public hearing this evening. Before I do that, I would like for Commissioner Fan to unmute and please sound present so the record can reflect that you are with us this evening, sir. Here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Our rules for our public hearing are as follows. As we continue to meet virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we're utilizing this tele-meeting platform to act upon planning and zoning cases as they come before this commission. As such, I am asking each participant other than the commissioners and staff to mute their devices. Once we get to parts of the agenda that require public input, those who have notified staff of their desire to speak will be recognized to speak. If you did not notify staff but desire to speak, please use the raise hand or chat functions to be recognized. Thank you. Public hearings before the Planning and Zoning Commission shall be conducted in accordance with Section 10-2219 of the East Point Zoning Code and Development Regulations as follows. Persons both favoring and opposing the proposed case will be provided an opportunity to address the commission. The applicant for the zoning case or the applicant's designated representative, if any, will be entitled to speak first, followed by other speakers in favor of the proposal for a total of 15 minutes. Those who oppose the proposed zoning case will then be permitted to speak for a total of 15 minutes. By majority vote, the commission may increase the total time of speakers provided that each side is given the same amount of time. Is there, if there's more than one speaker per side, the chair or the presiding officer may limit the time allotted to each individual speaker other than the zoning applicant. The zoning applicant reserves a portion of his or her time for allotted, the zoning applicant may reserve a portion of his or her allotted time rebuttal. Speakers must adhere to the rules of the quorum. Prior to speaking, each speaker shall identify him or herself and state his or her current address. Each speaker shall speak only to the merits of the proposed zoning ordinance under consideration, shall address remarks only to the commission, and shall refrain from making personal attacks on any other speaker. The presiding officer may refuse a speaker the right to continue if after first being cautioned, the speaker continues to violate the rules of the quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard our rules for public hearing. At this time, I'll entertain a motion, commissioners, to open the public hearing for case 2022 C is with Charlie P is in Paul A is in Apple 001 02. Mr. Chair? No. Yes, Commissioner Miller? Uh, motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett, that we open public hearing for case number 2022 C is in Charlie P is in Paul A is in Apple 001 02. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing on the ayes, have it. The public hearing is now open. Do we have um, Mr. Singletary? You're going to present for the city. Is that correct? I'm gonna have staff, uh, senior planner, Mr. Bush, who will present for the city. Okay, excellent. Mr. Bush, the floor is yours. Actually, we have Don Tooley from Kemley and Horn uh, on the Zoom, and he's prepared to present, uh, provide a presentation to okay. us tonight. Mr. Tooley. Thank you, Mr. Bush. Mr. Chair, let me share a screen here. Please. And if someone will just give me a thumbs up when you can. We can see, see that. It. We can. Perfect. Great. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you all again this evening. Uh, I provided a, uh, th this presentation several months ago to a work session of the Planning Commission, 
and was asked to come back and provide a shorter but similar presentation. So I'm going to go through several of these just to kind of present uh, an overview and some of the highlights, and I'll pause for any questions. And obviously, staff is on as well. Uh, Ms. Kimberly Smith and her staff participated in this process as we went through. So feel free to stop me as we go through, but I will go through these slides fairly quickly. And like I said, we'll pause for questions. Mr. Tooley, just to let you know, our process for public hearings, we do not ask questions during the public hearing. And so once you complete your presentation, and we've heard from other proponents and opponents, at that time, the commission will have an opportunity to ask questions, but we do not do that during the public hearing itself. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. So just as a quick overview, this uh, project was uh, funded through the Atlanta Regional Commission's Community Development Assistance Program, or CDAP. Uh, it was a study that was focused along the Willingham Corridor Drive from Main Street and East Point all the way across the interstate <clears throat> into Hapeville uh, and included all three cities. Uh, it included an existing conditions of market assessment, identification of catalyst sites and projects, uh, and then developed a series of recommendations uh, for implementation. A series of outreach and meetings that occurred uh, during the process that included stakeholder meetings, stakeholder interviews and elected official interviews, an online survey and two public meetings. Uh, so it was a, a robust process that took place uh, mostly during the uh, 2021 calendar year. Again, just to kind of uh, lay the groundwork and the existing conditions, a lot of us know this corridor as we drive through the area, uh, mostly industrial. A lot of the industrial and employers that have been there over the years have faded and, and, and the area is in very much uh, a, a disrepair, kind of a shadow of its former self in a lot of ways. And so the study was intended to kind of uncover what the potential future might be, we set forth a new vision for what this could be. This area in a lot of ways is kind of the back door of all of the, the, the communities, the tri-cities that are here. A lot of us drive through here to get to and from where we're going, but not many of us actually, this is our destination. And so the study was focused on trying to recreate this area as a place that actually brings the Tri-Cities together. And the unifying factor that you can see on the map there in blue is actually the headwaters of the Flint River. And so this is that place where the Flint River, which is one of the longest and most impaired uh, rivers in the state of Georgia actually gets its start, finds its start in the city of East Point, travels through the Tri-Cities under the airport and on, on into South and Central, uh, Central and South Georgia. And so how can we kind of think about this area in a new way? And what's there that we wanna think about maintaining and keeping and enhancing? And what do we wanna to bring to the area in a new way? So you all, you all again, know the area very much, know the communities that, that uh, abut this area and some of the amenities uh, and partners that are kind of located in the area. Now, one of the exciting things that we kind of began to discover pretty quickly was that not only was the Flint River itself, the kind of the, the corridor itself, this unifying principle, but there's this opportunity to provide green space and perhaps even a greenway trail along the corridor as well, kind of pro providing a new reason for folks to come to this area, providing a new way for people to come together, to travel uh, between different points of interest, to travel between the different cities. And as the areas begin to develop, uh, create this new environment uh, to attract investment and attract uh, uh, new activity. Now, one of the things we looked at as we began to lay this, this area out was you know, identifying these core uh, uh, nodes along the way. And you can't really spread development out everywhere. You need to kind of find those catalytic points. And so we found several places along the corridor where these catalytic moments, these catalytic projects could occur. And this is both public kind of investment, sort of catalytic projects, as well as places where catalytic private development could occur uh, that, that would spur on further development in the area. And so we developed a series of recommendations as we went from, from uh, west to east along the corridor uh, that looked at some specific places where there could be some, some targeted investments, some targeted activity, and provided some different opportunities for how that might occur. Starting in the west, right where Willingham and Main Street come together, uh, near the Woodward uh, uh, rec, uh, par, uh, Rex uh, facilities, uh, is one of the first areas that we kind of came to. And one of the most interesting opportunities in this area is really a reuse of some of these buildings. A lot of folks kind of drive this area and just think, let's just get rid of it and start from scratch. But a lot of the development, a lot of the buildings in this area have some interesting, unique character that's just kind of been forgotten. That's just kind of an easy thing to drive past and forget about. But with a little bit of change and a little bit of reinvestment could really become an interesting node. And one of those places here is the former Claris building, again, located right near the tracks, uh, right near the Marta tracks and right near Main Street where Willingham intersects. Uh, this building's gone through several different uh, life cycles in its time, and at least at the time of the study was vacant. Uh, and what we suggested was perhaps this was an opportunity to introduce a place where uh, maker space, where uh, commercial kitchens, you know, restaurant tours could get their start. Things that you don't necessarily want these uses right on Main Street, right in the most pedestrian uh, walkable area, but perhaps adjacent to it, it brings an interesting 
um, uh, activity, interesting vibe, but also provides a space for small businesses and local folks to kind of find their, find their mark. And so this is a before image and this is an after image of kind of reimagining this building as what we're kind of calling sort of the Headwaters District or the, or the Flint uh, Market. Again, place for creative, uh, office space, maker space, um, perhaps a location for local artists to set up uh, galleries, perhaps a, a brewery or a mini food hall. Again, we know that there's already a lot of activity kind of as you go a little bit further north in this with the, the city working a lot right near the Marta Station, other breweries and things that are underway, kind of bringing some of that activity and some of that attention down into this area. This would actually be at the, the crossroads of several, not just uh, surface streets, but potential uh, bicycle paths so that potentially someone from this location could bike to the Marta station and get on Marta and go anywhere in the region and vice versa. We also looked at a couple of other areas along the corridor for potential catalytic sites. And so on the, on the top, you see uh, the area where uh, uh, Bobby Brown and uh, Willingham come together. And this was another area where there's the potential to kind of continue a lot of the growth and the investment that's been happening along the Virginia Ave corridor and, and pull that up further. And so thinking about residential uh, abutting some of the existing residential areas. And as you get into more of the industrial areas and commercial areas, introducing some new interesting commercial spaces. As you come on across the interstate and you come over toward International Drive in the Hapeville area, kind of a similar thing, except if there was an area along the corridor that's already seeing some activity, it's already seeing some investment, it's this area over here near International Drive, getting closer to Central Ave uh, and, and Virginia Avenue, where there's already a lot of in, uh, reinvestment, redevelopment happening, residential, hotel, other things like that. And so really just kind of continuing to play on that, but think about what is the type of community we wanna have? What, what, what is the, the urban form we wanna have? What kind of public spaces do we want there as well? Now, in each of these nodes, one of the things that was kind of the unifying factor again is the Flint River. And so one of the key takeaways from the study uh, is how do we celebrate the Flint? And there's this whole finding the Flint effort. In each of these cases, how do we sort of celebrate the Flint? How do we provide spaces for people to actually engage and interact with the Flint, to see the Flint uh, in a way that maybe they hadn't noticed it before? And so along with these potential development sites are also these green spaces that are scattered along, kind of like you know jewels, jewels on a necklace along the corridor. On the left, you'll see um, several images and you'll see the Headwaters Nature Preserve, which a lot of you may be aware of, and that's underway, right? Has funding, has a plan, and it's moving toward implementation. What, what an amazing thing to already have on the corridor that's already be gonna begin to bring people here to the corridor for a different reason, kind of shifting paradigms, shifting thoughts about the corridor. So how do we build on that? How do we add additional green space up and down the corridor? You know, maybe it's pocket parts, maybe it's stormwater retention facilities, uh, but some that are more beautiful than just kind of chain link fence that we tend to see around. Uh, how do we think about public art and how public art can address the Flint? You know, this is a, a river in an urban environment. And so how do we think about urban waterways and what we need to do there? But also this is a river that connects communities, not just to Metro Atlanta, but like I said, down into central and south Georgia. And so how do we celebrate all of the communities that are connected by this river that starts here in East Point in the Tri-Cities? And so one thought is introducing um, a, a nature center, kind of an urban waterways, uh, ur urban nature center that kind of presents and provides a, a additional classroom space, education space, community meeting space, but again, educates on how do we protect, how do we work with uh, urban waterways and ecology uh, in more urban environments. And so really kind of an exciting opportunity to think about how do we start to stitch together this area, not just with development potential, but with green space potential that brings our communities uh, together. Again, here's just a zoom in on the Headwaters Nature Preserve. Again, really exciting that that's happening. What I've highlighted here is actually uh, a green area that's mostly in the city of East Point uh, that is currently, um, there are a couple of industrial buildings that are on it that have gone in different states of, of being occupied. Um, probably not the highest and best use long-term, but we don't necessarily wanna kick all these businesses out that are located along the corridor. And so perhaps this is an opportunity for the city to kind of work with others to relocate this business and think about how that site could perhaps serve as a location for this uh, urban waterway, urban ecology kind of nature, nature center. When we talked with stakeholders along the corridor, the trail itself, the Headwaters Nature Trail, and some of these uh, green spaces were the things they got most excited about. And as we spoke with uh, representatives from Woodward Academy, this was something that in our stakeholder meetings and public meetings that they said several times again, this is one of the things they're most excited about. It's right in their back door. They saw a lot of potential partnership opportunities, not just with the existing space, that's gonna be coming online, but with this new uh, expanded space uh, and potential nature center. There's some other opportunities to, pr to present and provide kind of a really unique um, environment uh, that's not really present in a lot of Metro Atlanta, kind of this 
creekside, trailside development. You get some of this in, in, in Atlanta with the Beltline, but this would be a different scale and a different character than the Beltline. Uh, but an opportunity where not only do businesses and shops open onto the public streets, but actually have second doors that open onto these uh, trails and greenways and parks that are connecting through this area. Again, creating this sort of trail side, creek side sort of trail oriented development, if you will, uh, that again provides folks an opportunity to be outdoors, connect with nature, uh, opportunities for cafe dining and things like that, uh, and really pr provide and present a, a different type of environment than is in the Tri-Cities today. Here's a quick image. So uh, if you all can imagine, um, uh, there's the Doubletree Hotel and right near are a couple of, of parking lots that are essentially chain link uh, fence with razor wire around them. And there's mostly just uh, salvage yards and wrecked cars that are in that. Well, the Flint actually cuts through a couple of those. So we're actually standing, this view, we're standing on a culvert that crosses over the Flint looking north toward Willingham. Willingham's about where those orange, those trees with the orange leaves are. And so you wouldn't know that there's some amazing kind of um, natural feature beneath you. You just kind of think this is an area that's run down and seen, seen better days. And so here's that area reimagined with the Flint reopened, providing still some connectivity across, but still looking up toward Willingham in the distance with again, this new trail connection that connects all of the Tri-Cities through this area. You can see on the left, there are opportunities for sort of trail side, creek side, creek oriented, trail oriented development, uh, and really providing a, uh, providing a new opportunity for folks to get out and enjoy their community. We also developed and identified a series of implementation items. Not gonna get into all of them, but these are some of the key ones and I've actually bolded some uh, on the list that came out um, at kind of the top of, the, of, of a prioritization exercise. One is actually taking some of the stakeholders and some of the staff across the cities that work together and formalizing a, a bit of a, Willi a Willingham Corridor task force to kind of identify what are those key things we need to do first and then now what do we need to do to actually push that forward. Um, pushing ahead with the Headwaters uh, Trail Study so with the Headwaters Nature Preserve coming online, how do we begin to think about how we connect that out to the communities via this trail that could occur along Willingham Corridor? Any zoning changes that might need to occur to support some of this new development? Again, what we're not trying to do is wholesale redevelop everything into residential, redevelop everything into mixed use. We wanna kind of try to lean in onto that, onto that idea that maybe there are some interesting other uses that, that we want in our city, like breweries, like makerspace, that don't make a lot of sense in the middle of our neighborhoods and, and right, in our, right in our downtown, right in our main street, but this might be an excellent opportunity to kind of provide them and they even serve as a buffer to some of the remaining industrial uses. Uh, work on improving access to MARTA and the MARTA bus stops in the area. In some cases, there's barely room for someone to even stand outside the roadway to wait for a bus. And so improving that, providing shelter, lighting, other things like that. Um, that first rendering I showed you, the before and after of the Claris building, perhaps in that location, perhaps another location, providing a Headwaters Creative Hub, a place for innovation, for startups, for small businesses, for education of small businesses. Perhaps it's, it's uh, focused on uh, women or minority owned. Perhaps it's focused on artist focused uh, businesses uh, and providing that in this space. And then partnering with MARTA, MARTA has this interesting uh, program called um, uh, Artbound uh, where they provide public art, uh, work with us, others to provide public art on their facilities. And not only is the bridge that crosses Willingham provide this kind of gateway feature, but there's a large retaining wall that kind of goes on north of that. And so perhaps that's an opportunity to partner with MARTA to provide some public art uh, in a way that also enhances and provides a gateway uh, to the area. So again, I wanted to provide just kind of a quick uh, uh, reminder of uh, an overview of this project. So I kind of have added a couple of slides um, and removed a couple of slides from the last presentation, but Happy when the time is right to take uh, any questions or circle back on any of this uh, when, when the time is appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Tooley. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of the Willingham Corridor Study? Any other proponents here to speak in favor of the Willingham Corridor Study? Staff, you would have to let me know because I'm not able to see everyone. If you are <coughs> present and would like to speak in favor, please use the raise hand function. Chairman, we have one attendee and I'm going to allow them to speak. Okay, to see thank if you. they are interested in okay. talking. And before we get to that attendee, Mr. Tooley, I may have missed this. At the beginning of your presentation, did you state your first last name and your current address for the record? Uh, no, I, I, I probably didn't. Yeah, I can do that now. Yeah, John Tooley with Kimley Horn. And do you want work address or home address? I don't know if it matters for the record. Whatever address um, can be associated with Mr. Tooley. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just, since I'm representing Kimberly Horn, uh, 817 West Peachtree Street, Atlanta, Georgia. 
Okay, thank you so very much. Okay, um, uh, Director Smith, did were we able to identify the next speaker? Um, the speaker is is known as East Point resident. Would you like to speak in favor or have any comments in reference to the Willingham corridor study at this time? I will allow you to speak. Okay. No response. I see that speaker, they are muted. And so I just want to make sure that they unmute. Um, I have asked to for them to unmute. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. If there are no if there are no other proponents to speak in favor of this case, I'll then go to opponents. Do we have any opponents here to speak against this zoning matter? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Presley. How you doing this afternoon? First of all, sir. I'm doing well. Um, I hope you are too. Yes, sir. I'm I'm doing pretty great. I only had a uh, few questions if I could ask of Mr. Tully um about the Willingham project okay we're not allowed to ask questions until the public hearing is over so Understood. once the public hearing is over once we hear from the applicant the proponents and the opponents then we'll close the public hearing after we close the public hearing and then um we'll then have uh an opportunity to ask questions of mr Tooley. yes sir i apologize sir okay no worries okay are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning matter? Any opponents here to speak against the zoning matter? Hearing on the scene on commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing for 2022. C as in Charlie, P as in Paul, A as in Apple, that's 001 02. Motion to Mr. close Chair. the public hearing, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Fan, second by Commissioner Miller, that we close the public hearing for 2022. C is in Charlie, P is in Paul, A is in Apple, that's 001 02. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hear none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation? If Mr. Bush is doing the recommendation, we can't hear you, sir. You're muted. Sorry. Okay. Staff recommends the implementation of the recommendations, including the rezoning of the industrial districts to mixed use commercial industrial that will allow the necessary transformation of the corridor. Okay. Okay. All right, commissioners, we've heard from the applicant and we've heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I see two hands and we'll go first with Commissioner Presley and then to Commissioner Fan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you all for everyone who's here tonight. I have a few questions. I mentioned it to a city council person, uh, council member about the potential for a bar district in the Willingham corridor. Uh, one of the reasons I'm requesting uh, interest in this, I work for the city of Atlanta fire marshal's office, and I've seen countless times of establishments within the city of Atlanta that brung in revenue prior to COVID and after COVID. And I expressed to her, one of my concerns is so many people when they come to Atlanta and even residents who stay in Atlanta, Haightville College Park are south of I-20, when they consider that they want to spend their their, uh, their resources to have an entertainment time, they tend to want to take it to the city of Atlanta. Nothing against that. I work for it for the city. However, you're passing by eight, six miles of potential uh, revenue drip, uh, drivers here in the city of East Point, whether that be alcohol license, taxes of what could be taken in from food and beverage, and you're sending it into another municipality that could be here in East Point. When I purchased in East Point, I liked it because it had that South Carolina feel to me. Um, and I, honestly, I love East Point. And uh, not to get too personal about it, but I would like to see people gravitate, not passing East Point as a just a stop by to get gas, 
but to also say, hey, I want to live, work, and play here in East Point. Also, uh, Piedmont happen to have, uh, happens to have uh, somewhat of a beekeeper vegetation. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Tully mentioned it, an educational portion in their part where students and the public can come to be educated about certain vegetation that's growing there, certain uh, livestock keeping that's being there, like I mentioned, the beekeeping situation. Could we incorporate some of that in some of the green space that was previously mentioned. And also lastly, not an extravagant outdoor amphitheater, say Chastain Park, but maybe a medium-sized amphitheater to allow jazz, a symphony, public speaking, outdoor plays, if you will, a small mini amphitheater to again, incorporate Hateville College Park, East Point, and now South Fulton even into an outdoor space, a venue that the city could not only give entertainment, but also generate funds to maintain that, is, that space as well. So is it possible to add these aspects into the corridor study? That's all, all I had to say, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Presley and Mr. Tooley. This would be your opportunity or someone from the staff to respond to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Presley's questions and um, ideas around use along the corridor. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this, this is Kimberly Smith. Um, yes, I would like to respond to that. Um, one of the recommendations of the study was to incorporate some land use and zoning changes that would support revitalization in the area. And one of the recommendations that um, the, the city and the staff embraces is overlaying that area uh, through our comp plan with the mixed use industrial commercial zoning district that the city adopted in 2020. Um, and that particular zoning district was intended to allow for the type of uses that Commissioner Presley was speaking of, uh, allowing breweries and um, just a, a, a plethora of uh, land uses that the intent is for creating spaces, um, outdoor areas, open spaces, breweries, um, uh, uh, um, food truck type of areas. There's there's a whole listing of those type of um, uh, outdoorsy and trendy type of, of land uses that are that are included in that new zoning district, um, and it's it's to give the type of vibe that you would get um, from many areas that you have in city city of Atlanta and many other places where um, you have the restaurants and the bars. Um, all situated in, in a certain place. But I guess the a beautiful thing about East Point is, is the Flint River um, tributary that would allow for an additional um, element uh, that will provide a sense of place and community and opening up that, that tributary for ecology purposes, as well as um, for students in the, in the city to come and have outdoor classrooms. So we, that, that was the vision when this, when this study was uh, uh, embarked upon. And so we are with you and supporting you, Ms. Commissioner Presley, in your thoughts. And that, that was the complete intent. So, so thank you for your comments. I appreciate <laughs> you. Um, I, I wanna see the corridor happen. Yes. Greatly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Presley again, and thank you, Director Smith, for your responses. Uh, next, we have Commissioner Fan. Yes. First of all, I want to just uh, thank the gentleman for the presentation. This is my first time seeing it. Um, and I'm going to put my picture up so he'll see me. I uh, know I am. The, um, you talked about some plan for the Flint River that's already underway that I'm not aware of, and some of the others may be, and some may not be. So if you would explain that, that part, sir, so that I won't be in the dark. I won't play stupid like I know what I don't know, but I don't know. Okay. So uh, if you would tell me about that, and then I have several other questions I want to ask you. Ms. Smith, you want me to, Kimberly, you want me to handle that? Uh, yes, sir. If you could. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. So there's a couple of things that are going on. One is an effort called Finding the Flint um, that really started off as a 
as a grassroots campaign to kind of uncover and build excitement about the Flint River, right? Um, everybody knows the Chattahoochee. A lot of folks know uh, the Savannah River and some of the other big rivers in the in the state. And a lot of folks don't don't really know about or talk about the Flint River. And yet it's one of the longest uh, rivers in the state of Georgia. It's also one of the most impacted. It also supports not just urban communities and providing drinking water and other things like that, but it provides water for agricultural uses further south. Uh, and yet it's one of these rivers that just doesn't get a lot of attention. And so the Finding the Flint effort started several years ago as a way to build a coalition of public and private folks that be interested in celebrating and beginning to find ways to enhance uh, and support and um, uh, revitalize, you know, not just the areas around it, but the actual, the actual river, the actual corridor itself, kind of figure out ways to enhance it and improve it as well. So that effort's been going on for several years. They do have a, a website with some plans up there. There's several projects that came off of that effort. One of those is the Flint Headwaters Nature Preserve. It's, it's, I believe it's the first kind of implementation project from, from the Finding the Flint effort. Uh, that's pretty exciting. Uh, pulled together a lot of different funders and partners. It's a former, um, it's actually still current, uh, MARTA stormwater retention facility. So as you drive down Willingham, right as you pass by uh, Woodward Academy's uh, track field, there's this large gated area that's all wooden and overgrown uh, that if you pay attention, there's a little tiny MARTA sign on a couple of spots around it. Um, the city of College Park is going through the process of actually acquiring that from MARTA. And then what they're going to do is actually enhance it, provide some trails and some boardwalks and some the, some outdoor class space uh, um, and provide some additional plantings there and then open it up to the public as a public park. So it's still going to provide the stormwater relief that's needed for the area, but it's going to be accessible much like much like a fourth ward park uh, up in the city of Atlanta. Um, and so those are two of the specific um, kind of issues and processes and things that are already underway. The overall finding the Flint effort and then the Headwaters Nature Preserve is the is the first piece kind of out of the gate. So one of the things that this study really wanted to do was look at the corridor itself and begin to lean in on a couple of the ideas. And one of the ideas was, can we connect the Flint River with some sort of other greenways, connect it with green space or greenways or trails or something? And so in this particular area, kind of following the, the Flint River and the Willingham Drive uh, corridor, we've, we've identified that there is potential. It's a little tricky. There's a lot of right-of-way issues, uh, but there is the potential to connect that area so you can actually kind of bike sort of follow along with the flint as you go and at some points be right next to it so hopefully that answers your question mr commissioner it, it does it does the last name is fan f-a-n-n -N, that's two n fan okay <laughs> thank you the, uh the other the other issue here is is that you just brought up something in terms of the um college park and purchasing it is it on college park side or these point side it's in the city of College Park. So they purchased, there's actually a small piece that is in the city of East Point that hasn't been transferred, hasn't been purchased, because that would be a, a, a transaction need to occur between city of East Point and, and uh, MARTA. But the portion that is within the city of College Park is the portion that's being transferred uh, right now. Okay, no, so that's on the, on the, that would be on the southern side of the track. Okay, the, um, the other issue that uh, I want to talk about is the corner that it you talk about at Willingham and Main Street, the development there. Uh, there is several different properties that used to be a uniform company. The last time was there a uniform company. And then there is the uh, issue where those trucks are parked. Uh, is, that, is that whole area uh, considered from the the uniform, old uniform company, the way the vehicles are, that, that's that whole area that you're talking about redeveloping? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, good question. That That's one of the potential catalytic nodes. And so within that, the specific area that might, that might be the first piece to fall, that might transition, is kind of up to up to a lot of different things. Does the, does the city acquire property? Does a private developer come in and do it? Kind of how it happens? is maybe a question that still needs to be answered, but you're exactly right. Kind of as soon as you come under the tracks, headed east on Willingham Drive, you have the the, the old kind of, it's like a laundry facility. I think like you said, it, it, they, right. they cleaned uniforms and things there. And then there's truck storage and vehicle parking kind of in that area. That whole area is kind of one of those catalytic, catalytic sites that uh, uh, would make a real great impression if it could be transitioned into another use. Okay, now I'm gonna take it down a little further. Uh, as we go down, Pass, um, mm, I don't know the name of the street, I can't think of it right now. 
but the next corner going back toward Bobby Brown, right? That area that uh, I know that the power company has a lot of power wise and stuff. And you're talking about some residential area down in that area, or you talking about beyond, because I know the Hayfield is doing some development just on the other side, just outside of these point across from where that park is there. But uh, where, where are you, just give me a visual where you're talking about possible residential and in that area, because it's junk cars and, and some kind of other lumber yard or something down in that area. Uh, I can't for the life of me, I can't think of the name of that street right now, but you know what I'm talking about. From that area back to Bobby Brown, the development, what are you looking at there? Yeah, and again, this, this, these are all kind of high level sort of um, hypothetical from the analysis that we did and from the, the conversations we had, kind of some ideas that could be floated out there. The majority of the corridor right on the corridor would stay likely non-residential. There's, there's a lot of industrial uses that would probably stay. You mentioned a couple of the substations that are there. I mean, those aren't necessarily going anywhere. And so we don't want to propose residential right there immediately. You've got folks that are going to be frustrated with, with, with kind of the industrial uses there. Off of the corridor on the East Point side of the interstate, um, kind of supporting the existing single family neighborhoods and any area where you could appropriately um, infill with additional single family is, is kind of on the table. Right when you get to Norman Berry, Bobby Brown, that intersection itself, you have several large pieces of property that actually owned mostly by uh, one property owner who, who participated in this process. And it, it seems to be actively interested in figuring out how they can um, perhaps introduce new uses to their, to their property and maybe even redevelop their property. So think about some of the areas where the uh, rental car companies park their vehicles, where some of the shuttle companies park their vehicles. There's some salvage yards. Those, a lot of those are actually owned by the same property owner who's just held those in, I almost want to say in perpetuity, but <laughs> held them in, in for, for many, many years. And they're, it seems like they're interested in perhaps rethinking those properties themselves. So it's really right at that intersection of Norman Berry, Bobby Brown, and uh, Willingham Drive, where some of these uses might be introduced. Specifically, um, and Mr. Chair, do you mind if I share screen real quick to point this out? Please okay. Do. And I apologize if I'm taking too long to answer this question. Oh, please do, please do, oh, because I, 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 want, I want to see it. I want to say, I'm sure that others probably do too, but I want to okay. see it, what you're talking about. I know, I believe you're talking about just on the other side of, of Bobby Brown, uh, yeah, headed gotcha. back toward Hayfield. Those, those warehouses that are there in the car lot, that's the rental car lots in front of it. And there's a church just beyond that. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. We can. Okay, great. So, uh, Commissioner, right up in this area. So let me let me help you get your bearings here, because I know it's a little small. Uh, this here is uh, Willingham Drive. Right. Kind of where my cursor's going. This right. is Norman Berry, Bobby Brown, coming right. this way, and Norman Berry actually, as you all know, kind of splits off, comes here. So right at this intersection, there's a large uh, uh, property here that has, I think, again, it's a rental car company that hurts or somebody parks a lot of their vehicles there. As you go across the street, behind the double tree. There's two large parking lots that mostly just park salvage, salvage junk vehicles. Uh, there's not really, sometimes there's other fleet vehicles that are parked there. And then, as you mentioned, there's a large, long kind of industrial building, warehouse distribution building that's honestly seen better days. And, and I think folks are, are hopeful that maybe that transition could happen sooner rather than later. Uh, uh, the same property owner that owns these two properties on either side of Bobby Brown also owns a, a piece of property back up behind that industrial building. So they are very interested in actively kind of exploring their opportunities. I don't think we have a sense of timing on any of that, but this at least presents uh, an opportunity. So let me shift your, your, your view over to this graphic here where we've put some, some buildings from, from top down. So kind of looking down on the, on the, on the intersection of, again, here's, here's Bobby Brown, here's Willingham. This is one of those parking lots. And so where this area kind of uh, comes into the neighborhood you would have single family kind of abutting uh, existing single family. As you get closer to the busier streets, you would transition into perhaps townhomes and taller uh, residential, denser residential, uh, that's more appropriate kind of up on the busy streets, up on the commercial streets. Um, also with some addition of maybe hotel and some other uses as you continue across. There in that area, that back door is Egan Park. Egan, Egan mm -hmm. Park. Is that what you're talking about? That's correct, yes, sir. There's a, there's a, you showed a picture earlier of a walk through there, uh, and that's coming down uh, where the hotel is and 
uh, Crown Plaza and that. I'm familiar with that area in terms of that. That's coming down to that area you just talked about where Egan Park is uh, there, where the, almost where that hotel is, uh, the Fairley or whatever it is, the whole Fairfield Hotel is there. I, 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 I'm, I'm really familiar with that area. That's why I'm, I'm asking these questions. So what happens to now, because the bigger problem that we've had, and those of us who've been here for a while, know that Newell is a problem in terms of the, um, and that's on Central Avenue, the Central Avenue side, but new is, has been a, a, a problem in terms of for environmental issues. How do you plan on addressing that in terms of, and I know we're doing the corridor, but then you still have those industrial uses on the other side, and new has been a big problem for years uh, in this community. So how do you plan on mitigating that with what you're planning on doing on this side? Yeah, and I'll, I'm, I may let um, Ms. Smith jumping in just a set, in, in, in a moment, but I, you know, really what this is starting to do is just recast the vision to begin with of what do we want to see here. Right. Um, Newell is one of those long-term users that I don't think we see in the in the short term them just deciding to to leave. I think as the cities and the tri the tri cities start to reinvest in this area, and as property values kind of go up in some areas, it, it may be that some businesses find that it doesn't make sense for them to operate there anymore, and they may or may not want to shift out. So some of these um, industrial uses and users may decide that they want to locate um, somewhere else. Um, in, in some situations, um, in other parts of the metro and other parts of the state, there's kind of a public-private discussion to figure out how to relocate a use from an area to another area. So while we didn't specifically address Newell and how to kind of work with them or, or, or think about them transitioning out, we did identify there's several users that are likely not moving in the short term. And so how do we kind of work with that? So what we don't want to go again and, and propose is right along the corridor, a whole lot of single family or a whole lot of residential up and down. We want to kind of be strategic about where we put that. In some cases, we may want to introduce what we kind of kept calling industrial adjacent uses. So there, if you were a residential uh, unit, you might be okay being next to these folks that are kind of industrial adjacent. They don't mind being next to both of you. They can get along with their industrial neighbor. They can get along with you, kind of provide that buffer. And so that's a lot of the uses up and down Willingham that were proposed or kind of these commercial, very light industrial. When we say light industrial, like fabrication for movie sets, you know, um, folks that need just a shop to produce and, and, and um, put some, some very basic things together. There's an e-bike company that was looking for a place to move uh, kind of some of their assembly that they're, that's from Metro Atlanta. Um, and this was an area that, again, it's light, light manufacturing assembling. It's not heavy, heavy industry. And it's, an, it's a local e-bike, which would be kind of a cool, a cool uh, potential user. So, so that's kind of a lot of what we proposed was there. That one section was kind of the one pieces where we saw an opportunity to provide kind of a residential buffer from Egan Park up to the, up to the roadway, rather than taking commercial uses and kind of cramming it into the edge of Egan Park, have a bit of a transition of lower re re density residential up into slightly higher density, and then perhaps commercial uses up on up on the road itself. Now these I mean, are all high level high level vision to kind of give the city some direction to be able to have discussion with property owners and other, others as they go forward. None of these are formal proposals at this I point. Got, I got you. I'm going I'm going to yield um, at this time and let uh, another, other commissioners ask questions. I'm going to yield. Thank you for your questions, Commissioner Fan, and thank you for your responses, Mr. Tooley. Next, we have Commissioner Mark Fields. Commissioner Fields, you have the floor. And Commissioner Fan, if you would please lower your hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Tooley. Thank you for, for uh, presenting. I, I had the opportunity to be a part of the community meetings when this initially was started. And um, I'm very excited to see something like this come to the city of East Point. Um, I think the question that you alluded to it and the question that I have is more around the substation. There was a, a lot of concern from our neighbors in Egan Park a, around the substation and what's going to happen. I believe they at one point they were talking about talking about expanding the substation and I just heard you say that most likely it's not going anywhere. So what do you have in place to mitigate, you know, this beautiful, this beautification of Willingham Quarter, and now you've got a substation right in, you know, the heartland of it, if you will. 
Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. So two things, just to make sure um, and clarify, there are two, at least two existing substations along the corridor. One is is kind of by the um, uh, more of a local co-op, uh, MIAG, and then the other is by Georgia Power. Um, and so what I was referencing was, uh, oftentimes once a substation is in, it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. It typically is there. Sometimes sometimes they'll decommission them and move them somewhere else. But that's probably a, a community feature that's that's going to be there for 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 the time being. So that's mostly what my comment was referring to. You're correct. As we were going through this process, we were kind of made aware as well that um, Georgia Power was looking at they needed to expand uh, the substation that was there already, and they were going through a process to figure out can we expand on the footprint where we are? Do we need to look for another location? Uh, and so there was a whole kind of site selection process, if you will, that they were working through separate from. The Willingham study, um, and and I know that uh, city was involved in those conversations. I believe elected officials and staff had been uh, involved, and the the last I heard was that they had narrowed down to some particular sites within the area. But I don't I don't honestly know what the latest was on if they decided on a site or um, kind of timing on that. I will say one of the things that came up in conversation with um, not only your elected officials uh, and and staff, but also some of the stakeholders is. Okay, we don't want to necessarily just say, okay, well, oh well, you know, uh, utilities coming in, we just need to kind of yield to them, let them do whatever they want, just put a big X on the on that part of the map. We said, okay, it is reality that is happening. Let's go ahead and just keep push forward with the <clears throat> community vision, and at least when the time comes to figure out how and where that's happening, and there's negotiations that take place, there's there's a position from which the city can say, okay, so here's our vision for how we do this. How can we how can we find a compromise? How can we find a a location that works, how can we find as close to a win-win as we can? And so you won't see a specific reference on any of the graphics to the substation. You'll find some in the text about the, the fact that a utility was was looking for that in the area. And again, our position was to, to just kind of um, set the vision for the community in a place where again, you all would be able to, to, to have conversations when, when and if the time is right. There are examples of substations that come into areas and they do their best to mitigate the visual impact from that, set it back from the street some, uh, screen it with uh, uh, walls or landscaping, uh, perhaps even public art gets put on some of those walls. So there's even some of that conversation that happened as well as, as let's think about how we can mitigate this. This is a great opportunity for the cities, Tri-Cities. Uh, it's a great opportunity for Metro Atlanta in this area. How can we not kind of undo that before it even gets started with, with kind of a, a not well thought through investment? So, um, Ms. Smith, I don't know if you have anything to add to that or if anyone anyone else has any any updates on that. I don't have anything to add to that. I don't have an update at this time. I know that Georgia Power was looking to expand an existing substation in the area, but at this time, I don't I don't have any updates on it. I know that um, some of the elected officials as well as our city management team had some meetings um, but unfortunately, I don't know the outcome of them, but I definitely could could ask about it and maybe have a discussion at it at the next work session. And, and I would just would interject that I think it would be um, important since, uh, the, you know, the likelihood of it just disappearing is is would be difficult uh, to show how do you how do you incorporate a substation into this into this type of plan and you know what are some ways that it can be mitigated what are some right now it's a it's a link fence so you see everything that you know that that's right there so how could you disguise it so that it's not um a, a sore thumb in a beautiful spot yeah yep agree thank you so much commissioner fields um for your questions and your thoughts on that substation and for the responses from mr tooley and director smith um are there any other commissioners who would like to speak to this willingham quarter study commissioner fields would you please lower your hand thank you sir okay um mr tooley and director smith i've got some questions and <clears throat> mine are probably a little more granular. Um, and the challenge that I may have is that I develop my questions based on the email, the attachments that Director Smith sent us. There were two attachments in that. One was a shorter document, which was very similar. I think it was the presentation that you gave us in April. 
And then the other attachment was a larger document, which I think falls in that sort of at the end. And so the questions that I developed, they were slide specific, but I'll do my very best to go through them. Um, the first thing I wanna say, like all of my fellow commissioners have mentioned, this is really an exciting um, study and reimagining of Willingham Corridor. It was well packaged, well presented. So for everybody who worked on this, kudos to all of you. It looks really good. And I too am very excited about what Willingham can become. Um, on one of the slides, you might want to share your screen again. This is the slide that um, I had it as slide number eight, but I don't know if it's still slide number eight. It's the reimagining of, yes, this slide right here. I, I see here, um, there's something that speaks to community meeting space. So could you give us sort of an idea of what you mean? I mean, on its face, it sounds like pretty obvious, but it's really sort of the impetus for my question also, because I wanna make sure that I'm clearly understanding what is imagined as a community meeting space within this structure here. Yeah, great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. I think um, a lot of the redevelopment that's occurred up kind of on the east side of the Beltline in West Midtown sort of shows you how this can happen where you'll have sort of these public private spaces that perhaps have restaurants or a food hall or a brewery, but there's sort of a, there's sort of a public event aspect to it. Maybe it's a small uh, gallery space or concert venue or something, something to that effect where it's not the same as just a plaza or city hall with a meeting room, which is all great and necessary, but kind of this other sort of space where the community can come together and sort of celebrate what it is to be community. So that's our that's our thought here. The list on the side of the screen uh, is meant to be kind of a menu of options of what this could be. Because really how this comes together is through the city working with the current or future potential owner uh, of this facility and figuring out what is the vision for what we want to see here? How can we work together to make that happen? Um, there are uh, organizations, arts organizations, community organizations that look for and need space to host events, host themselves. Um, and so they may be looking for a place on the south side. One of the things we talked about is um, incubator space. Incubator space is not just this thing where somebody just goes in a room and works by themselves, but it's kind of this collaborative space. And sometimes there's other um, community facilities and resources that need to be there as well. So it's really kind of a, I hate to say choose your own adventure, but there's a lot of potential to use the space in a really creative way that could double uh, kind of as this public and private sort of space. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, great. So you said what I thought, uh, what I was hoping that you would say, but when I read community meeting space, I think of a formal meeting area. And so when I, I read that, I really thought that a community meeting space would not be the most appropriate here. I really think of it as a community gathering space. And uh, because I think that what you were just saying about giving examples on um, the Beltline and all of those things, especially if we're looking for this to have a brewery or a food hall and all of those things, I think, and, and to piggyback on what Commissioner Presley said, this potentially, potentially could be a great place for that outdoor amphitheater space, but I think of it more as a community gathering space. And to address your point about folks wanting to have a meeting space on the south side, I think that that would be more appropriate in the nature preserve sort of building. Um, hopefully, we would be able to reimagine this space in such a way that we could bring as many employment opportunities as possible. And so when I think of meeting space, I think of like a formal meeting space where there really isn't job opportunities there. It's just space for a community to meet. I think of this particular node here as more of a community gathering space. And it sounds like that's what you described. Would that be fair? Yeah, Mr. Chair, that's correct, yep. Okay, so um, like I said, I know that I'm a little granular, but the reason I am doing that is because I think that this document has to outlive me and it has to outlive you. So if someone were to read it, their interpretation could be different from what you described, because I think what you described is a community gathering space. And so that's why I wanted to sort of make the distinction between those things, because then I later saw 
um, in the slide, I believe where it speaks to the nature preserve. I think I did see again, community meeting space when I said, this is probably the best place for that so that they can host meetings, they can do all those things. It's a gathering space also by the nature of what it would do, but hopefully a place where there's a mini food hall, very similar to a Pont City Market, that we won't carve out prime real estate for a community meeting space, but utilize as much of that space as possible for breweries, retail, restaurants, you know, bistros, whatever, um, so that people could enjoy those things and it could provide employment opportunities as well. So that's one of the things that I'm hoping that we would be able to change from community meeting space to community gathering space. Um, if we then also, I love the idea. I also read um, the Streets Alive idea um, and the Flint River Festival. Um, for all of the reasons that you gave, um, I believe that it was a question of Commissioner Fan, the fact that it is a very long river, um, one of the longest in the state of Georgia. So I believe that because it does um, run, you know, through this city um, as well as uh, College Park and Hapeville, to celebrate that, you know, and it's something that um, I would venture to say that most citizens in the city don't even know about. And so to have sort of a festival, an annual festival around that. I think will be great. And then of course, the Streets Alive um, on Willingham would also be awesome, again, as a place for the community to come to gather and to partake in any of the offerings along the corridor. Um, also, there was a slide number 22. What is on your slide 22? Is that still in this presentation? It was in the previous presentation. Let me check real quick. For you. So I, Reduce this down because I thought we might have a little less time. Do you, do you mind sharing what was? Do you remember what was on that slide? Because I can try to flip on through that it. slide. I think it was um, it it was almost like a matrix, and it had all of these sort of action items with a time frame, and then yeah. which municipality or which party would be responsible for it. Yes. Okay. So if we go down to the next to the last code enforcement. And I see partner organizations and we have NA, right? Um, so this is what I'll say about code enforcement for the city of East Point. Um, at the moment, it is not best in class. And I'm gonna give that pregnant pause and then I'm gonna state it again for the record. At the moment, it is not best in class. And I think that code enforcement is going to be very important as we try to redevelop and reimagine this corridor and even other parts of the city. And so I don't know if we are gonna have to invest in resources to have some outside entity to come in to give some training, additional training, but I think code enforcement that we should not have an NA there. I think that we've got to pull in whatever necessary resources are available to make sure that East Point, and I can only speak to East Point, um, but I'm hoping that all the other municipalities are also really effectively addressing code enforcement. And I believe that economic development should be a part of that. And if there are resources that are needed, they might want to put some of that in their budget um, because code enforcement is a part of economic development as well. So I was just a bit concerned um, that I think we need to think through that just a little more. I would like to see some resources there that will help all the municipalities address in a very effective way code enforcement. And I see that Director Smith has raised her hand. I think you might want to say something about code enforcement. So please go ahead. Yeah, I just I just wanted to talk. I'm glad that you spoke of of this, but you know, we've been in several meetings um, together where you spoke out about code enforcement in the city. And, you know, as everyone know, we're going through the comprehensive plan rewrite and there's a portion in there where um, we have to update our our community work program. And that's one of the, the features that could be added um, as one of the projects that receives um, funding and, you know, it, there, there could be a certain amount of priority set to it. So because I've heard you say that many <laughs> times, I'm going to definitely put that as a line item in our comprehensive plan for um, for future action and, and support for funding. Perfect. 
I appreciate that. And yes, um, as you can tell, it is a pet peeve of mine. And I think that we're not doing a great job of code enforcement. And I think if we were to do a better job, we could see even more just naturally occurring development. Um, I think that when we allow the city to exist in a state of non-conformance as it relates to code, um, persons looking to locate or relocate their business, if they were to drive to the city and they'll be like, well, geez, I don't want my business to go here. So I think that we have to do a better job at addressing that. Um, Mr. Tooley and Director Smith, there was then in the bigger document, um, that was the document labeled Willingham Corridor Study, Existing Conditions and Economic Assessment. And I don't know if that document is at your fingertips, but I've got um, a few things that I wanted to ask about from that document, because that is ultimately what we would pass, correct? We would add that to the comprehensive development plan? That's correct. Well, the intent is to, is to adopt the entire um, uh, plan along with the implementation plan and the, and the recommendations as a part of our comprehensive plan. Right, so it's that, so Director Smith, it is that document then because that's the document that I think it's like, it was like a hundred and some pages. Spots. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, yes. That's the document. Okay, so then I definitely wanna see that. Um, so if someone can pull that up into a share screen, I would appreciate that. If we could go to slide 10 on that one, this is very granular. This is an easy fix on that. And Mr. Chair, this is the full the full document, including the recommendations, so it may not be exactly slide 10. So just tell me. Um... So this is what I think that I went through earlier today. And so um, I know that it's a slide and then there's a page. So if you continue to go down. OK, yes, it is. So you see under cities. Minor, capitalized point and East Point, please. See that? I I will check that. I think it's all. I think it's all. It's, oh, you mean in the text itself? That is correct. Yep, I see it. Okay. Yes. yes sir, so um, I just want to make sure that we have all of those things correct. Also, I see here, based on in this particular narrative that in addition to East Point, College Park, Hapeville, that a very small portion of the, the boundaries includes Atlanta, correct? Uh, that, Mr. Chair, that's correct. A, a portion of the city of Atlanta is kind of just south of the area where uh, the three tri-cities kind of drew the boundary. That's correct. You, you can see that on the left. Okay, and, um, and I do believe that I also read that there is um, already some movement in terms of having the city of Atlanta involved because a portion of it, it is, it is within the corporate limits of Atlanta, correct? And is that somewhat from planning or is that in addition to the 12th council district member? Because I believe that that would be the 12th council district. Mr. Chair, that's a good question. At least when we started this process, city of Atlanta wasn't participating. I don't know that at the time they'd gone through some staff changes. I know that they've gone through some staff changes in planning just recently. So that may be something for Director Smith to kind of identify who the right okay. point of contact would be. They didn't directly participate in this particular study this time, um, uh, but kind of plans and policies that they have that are just across the border, we obviously, obviously consider during the process. Okay. Um, Director Smith, is Charlotte still the Director of um, Bureau of Planning at City of Atlanta? She is not. Um, I believe it's Kenyatta. I can't oh, remember. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes, of course. She's from East Point. <laughs> You're right. Um, Kenyatta is. Kenyatta. Kenyatta is. All right. So, um, okay. Um, slide 35, Mr. Tooley. Okay. And this particular slide, it speaks to the unemployment rate. Um, keep going. Maybe further back. Let me go back to the demographic section. All right. See. Okay. 
Has this document also changed and is it different from the one that Director Smith sent to us? We, have, Mr. Chair, we have not um, revised this document since okay. much earlier in, in the year, but I'm, 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 let me just check real quick on the page count. So see slide 35, slide 35, page 57. There, you go. That is it. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So here, when I was looking at the unemployment rate, one of the reasons that it also went back to the very first structure that know that we talked about. And um, if you look at both the Willingham corridor and the Willingham area, the unemployment rate for the Willingham corridor in 2019 was 8%, and the Willingham area, it's 7%. And according to the, the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the Department of Labor in 2019, the national unemployment rate was 3.6. And so this is more than double, if not doubled, for the Willingham area. And that is why I'm sort of adamant about let's make sure that we're providing as many employment opportunities as possible. And so that whole community meeting space in an area that we would have a full hall, a food hall and all of those things. Let's maximize that to provide retail and food and employment so that we can get people, they don't have to travel from their city or their neighborhood to find work. Um, can we go to page 41, slide 41. Sixty-seven, page 67. Okay, this speaks to um, housing, so residential units. And I see here, there are two things that I wanna ask about. So it talks about market rate units and affordable units that have been, I guess, completed in that area. And when I total up the market rate units we get and, and the affordable units is a total of 913 units whenever this was uh, compiled, right? And so of those, it is 58% of those are affordable and 42% are market rate units. And then just above this graph, it talks about two other projects that are in the pipeline. Can you share with us what those projects are? How many units are they? And are they market rate or affordable? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, we have to defer to you on this. I may have to circle back. This, we had a, a market consultant, HRNA, that uh, developed the study. So if you give me just a minute to see if I can recall, I've got to dig back in the in the back of my brain here for a second. Um, there were two projects, I believe, um, up Norman Berry, north of Willingham, north of the tracks, kind of in that um, eastern portion of, of of East Point. That at the time of the study had been proposed. I don't know that they were uh, in the approval process at that time, and then I actually am not sure if they moved forward um, af after the study completed. Um, Director Smith, I don't know if you recall one of these, they weren't micro units, but they were smaller, smaller units that were proposed kind of coming up Norman Berry. Um, uh, and then the, the other development, I believe was just a normal market rate kind of housing, housing development that had been proposed. Yeah, I have to, I have to look that up and, and circle back. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm very interested in that also because I sit on the GIC um, task force for the city of East Point, and obviously that's around housing, right? And I was going to also bring up this point, and I still will bring up the point when we go through the staff analysis, um, because there is, I think, a mention in there that I want to bring attention to. So... The reason that I'm bringing this up is that it's so wonderful for us to reimagine the Willingham Corridor. In order for the brewery, the retail, any of those things to survive, we're gonna have to have disposable income. And so I don't know, and I didn't see it, if there are goals for percentages. Do we have any kind of goals around, we would like to see this area have X percentage of market rate units or tax credit units and X percent of affordable units. Because right now at 58%, we may not have the right mix to really support the type of development that we've spent all of this time and money and saying that we want. Because at the end of the day, the businesses are gonna to wanna to stay in business. And I would like for the residents to have quality businesses and for those persons who um, 
for whatever reasons, um, find themselves having to um, be in affordable housing, they also should live in an area that is amenity rich. But how do you get that? We won't get that if there are far more affordable units than there are market rate units because the disposable income just is not there. So does this study contain any type of balance or goals as it relates to the various types of housing and the income levels? Because I think that that is really important. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So in this study specifically, we didn't uh, target or identify specific goals. Um, that, that conversation came up several times and actually was kind of a lively debate that sort of kept going back. We'd have residents and stakeholders and others that would say, we need more market rate. We, we have too much affordable. And then you, you would still have folks speak up and say, yes, but the area is getting more expensive. We need to keep affordable on the table. And there was enough of a discussion that where we left it, and I think it's an item in the implementation plan, is actually for the city to, to follow up on kind of previous housing studies and kind of conduct new housing studies to identify some specific targets. I will say one of the um, realities is with the with where we um, uh, did the analysis is north of the tracks in this area is one of the more kind of naturally occurring affordable areas, one of the areas that has some more of the kind of moderate and modest and lower income uh, residents within the city. And so that's that's a little bit of what you're seeing reflected in that 50-50 split, that in this microcosm of East Point, south of the tracks with Egan Park and everything else, you don't have too many affordable units coming on online at all. North of the tracks because of what's already there and kind of what perhaps the very hyper local market is, is asking for, you have slightly more affordable units or actual affordable units that are coming online. So it, it's a little bit of the actual window we were looking through uh, and the area we were looking at, uh, as well as just the need for perhaps the city to have this broader conversation on housing and what do we need to provide? What what do we have and what do we want to make as a goal for the future? That that was an action item that we kind of left for uh, a follow-up. Since, as you know, it's a, it's a broader discussion than even just the study area and even East Point themselves, you all can only do so much to address uh, affordability. That's a multi-city and a, a ultimately a metro-wide conversation. So um, we didn't specifically dig, on, dig in on that, but suggested a follow-up so that you all would have uh, some specific analysis to follow up on to answer that question. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate, I appreciate that response, Mr. Tooley. Um, and uh, I will say that it is one that I know that it is out of your control on that, but I am disappointed in that we don't have um, more guidance around that for this study. Um, it would be so wonderful to use this as a marketing tool you know, um, but I think that developers are going to sort of want to know. And I think for us as a city, um, I know that affordability is an issue, not just in the city of East Point, but across the entire nation, the housing market has just gone that way. But I just feel like we're just out here doing this. We're just flailing. So, and, and the other thing that I feel is that because I've been on this commission for such a very long time, when there are housing developments that come before this body for a number of reasons, if those housing developments are not affordable, sometimes they get hung up at the next level or they get denied simply because we don't really know what type of mix we're looking for, okay? So if it could very well be that we have met our goal or we are close to meeting our goal, our desired goal, for affordability, and now we need to add something else to that mix so that we can attract the type of development that this study speaks to. And I think that absent that, then we will run into some trouble. I'm gonna leave that there. Um, okay, so those are the only things that I had for that, but I, I, I really wish that we had a bit more structure around a mix for affordability, uh, affordable housing and market rate housing, because I think that that could help guide us and also market this for developers to come in and to do what we envisioned here. Um, as it relates to staff analysis, can we go to the document that um, I believe Ms. Solomon sent us from the staff regarding the analysis?
And so if we go down to the section that says, I think, purpose, and we go to bullet 10, and it is preserve, preserve affordability. So if I were to ask every person on staff, well, what does that mean? I might get a different response from everyone. If I ask each of the commissioners, well, what does that mean? What does preserve affordability mean? So again, I believe that documents, they need to outlive all of us. So when we say preserve affordability, perhaps somebody from staff can tell us what the idea is around that, um, just so that we're clear, because I, I would have one interpretation and someone else may have another. Well, Chairman, uh, throughout the study, there was uh, community meetings and online surveys and uh, quite a bit of residents uh, that came up. Uh, it didn't detail or it didn't really define what affordability is, which is subjective to many. Um, it, would, it literally says pres preserve affordability and that came from the uh, residents of East Point. And again, there's no specific uh, talk of what affordability is and what that looks like. Right, and, and, and Mr. Bush, I will tell you that I agree with you because affordability is subjective. If I moved into a million dollar house, it's because I can afford it. So affordability is gonna be different for everybody. And so I think that when we're talking about a study like this and we wanna incorporate this into our comprehensive plan and particularly around housing and all of the issues we have with housing, I just think that we have to be a bit more intentional and a bit more specific because it is subjective. It leaves room for interpretation. My interpretation can be very different from someone else's. And then we may not, what we do know is that the driver for the great development is that you have to have bodies, you have to have people, and you have to have, and you have, to have disposable incomes for people to partake in all of the services or the things that are being offered. When, when we see affordability in this context, uh, particularly uh, with feedback from residents, I think uh, there's a desire for some type of plan to keep existing residents in their homes. Uh, you know, we saw in the city of Atlanta where the taxes uh, increased tremendously and people could no longer afford to pay those taxes and live down. Ultimately, they lost their homes. So when we're talking in the context of affordability, I think that, that was the intent. But again, it wasn't spelled out in a study. Right. And, and we've talked about these things in, in GIC and all of those things. And I agree um, there is a concern about being able to keep legacy, long-time residents, all of those things in their homes. And how do we do that? And I think that there are ways to do that through policy. Um, but also, I think that when we're talking about having our city grow, um, we, we cannot be afraid of market rate as long as we understand clearly what our goals are in terms of affordability and what does affordability mean. And as you just stated, Mr. Bush, for a lot of our legacy residents, it is how do I continue to stay in my home that I've lived in for 35, 40 years without being a victim of high property taxes that I cannot afford. And so we need those residents and we also need residents at different price points, which makes the community very dynamic and very vibrant. And it brings in the amenities um, that one would want to have around them. So those are, those are my concerns. And I really wish that we saw a bit more structure and specificity around the whole residential piece. Um, and, and I'll end my comments on that there. Commissioners, any other comments or questions for staff or for Mr. Tooley regarding the Willingham Corridor study? All right, Ms. Here if I could, Ms. Chair, if I could, I just want to say, uh, tell on what you just said because Mr. Tooley talked about the northern side um, where there are modern homes, but that's the East Washington community, which is trending, which is changing. Uh, the price point of those houses over there where people have been in over there for years and years, as you just said, uh, the legacy community, but now those houses are being uh, upgraded to two and three and four hundred thousand dollars houses. So that, that's not a um, modern income. 
for many of those people that are over there. So I just want to throw that out because you're absolutely right um, when we talk about marketing affordability because affordability is what can I afford versus what you can afford. You can afford a million dollar house. I can only afford a house for $250,000. <laughs> so uh, it's, it just depends on a person's income. Right, right, okay. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. Any other comments or questions regarding the Willingham Corridor study? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, this is Presley again. Um, sir, I've gone up and down the Central Avenue of Hayville. I know they're a partner in this study and seeing what they're constructing uh, throughout the North side after the Chick-fil-A, prices will rise, market rates will come. Uh, and I, again, it's not to praise Hateville. In fact, I'm, I'm, I have a level of disdain that Hateville is, anyway, I mean, uh, the growth that I'm seeing over there, I already know that my property taxes are gonna increase uh, due to that. Uh, the poor center, the hotel, the new service center, the Willingham study in the corridor and the businesses that will come from this, there's, I'm pretty adamant that there will be a market rate of people, households, incomes are going to be able to support the type of uh, ventures that we're proposing on our aspect of the, the city line. Um, some houses are now being constructed. The sign says 500,000 starting. Once they've eaten at all the diners in Hakeville, they're going to come over to the Willingham corridor to continue to patronize those businesses as well. Right. That, that was just my thought. Right. So I appreciate that, Commissioner Presley. And I was just driving down um, Central Avenue the other day, and I know that there's right behind the um, the inn suites or whatever they're building those houses there in that cool. subdivision that are starting at four or five hundred thousand dollars. I, I just beg to differ in that I believe that they've got a real plan. They've got a real plan. And I think as it relates to their economic development, and um, I also understand that our city, particularly our mayor, is very concerned about making sure that we can provide relief for our legacy residents. And so I wanna make sure that we are able to do that and to attract all of the other price points. So again, that there is a great mix of incomes to create a very dynamic um, citizenry for our city to enjoy all of the amenities. So, um, all right. Uh, staff, did you read your recommendation is to approve, correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, commissioners, we heard from the applicant, okay. which is the city of East Point, and we've had lively discussion around this issue this time. I'll entertain a motion for case number 2022, is in Charlie, P is in Paul, A is in Apple, dash 001 dash 02. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the um, corridor study. Okay. Um, is there second. a second? It's second. been moved by Commissioner McKnight, seconded by Commissioner Miller. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. It's been moved by Commissioner McKnight, seconded by Commissioner Miller. This body recommends approval of the Willingham, the amendment to the East Point Comprehensive Plan to update the community goals section to incorporate the Willingham case study. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The motion um, is, uh, the motion passes. Our next agenda item under old business is 2022, U as an umbrella, dash 001, dash 04, with the concurrent variance, 2022, V as in Victor, C as in Charles, dash, mm -hmm. dash, dash 04. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, get this sharing. Okay, awesome. 
Um, so we have um, item number two for our business case 2022, you as an umbrella, dash 001, dash 04. Also a concurrent variance 2022, V as in Victor, C as in Charlie, dash 001, dash 04. The applicant, Mike, Volley, and Public Storage. The location is 3291, 3271, and 3261 Camp Creek Parkway. The applicant seeks special use permit to expand existing public storage facility with a concurrent advantage for separation from other self-storage uses, parking, and loading. The case type is a special use permit with a concurrent variance. And just to give an overview of um, this particular case here, as stated, the address is 3291, 3271, and 3261 Camp Creek Parkway. Again, the case number is 2022, U as an umbrella, dash 001, dash 04. Also, the current variance, 2022, Viz and Victor, C as in Charlie, dash 001, dash 04, applicant Mike Volley and public storage. The zoning for this particular property is C2, which is a uh, central business district. Again, the request is the applicant seek special use permit to expand an existing public storage facility. Also six of variance for special use, uh, from, I'm sorry, from variance from separation from other self storage uses, parking and loading. Again, here, this is the zoning map. Like I said, it is uh, C2, uh, central business district. Mr. Singletary, hold on just one second. We've yes, got sir. to open the we've got to open the public hearing. Oh, my apologies. So we're gonna. I know that we've heard this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the public hearing for this, um, and uh, we'll then come back for staff's recommendation. You'll have an opportunity to go through that. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, commissioners. At this time, I entertain a motion to open the public hearing for two zero two two. You as an umbrella that's zero zero one that's zero four. With the concurrent variance 2022 via in Victor C as in Charles as 001 04. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Miller. Motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Bryant that we open the public hearing for this agenda item. All in favor, sound aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed, sound nay. Hearing on the ayes have it, the public hearing is now open. And the applicant, if you are present, the floor is yours. Please state your first and last name and your current address. And that will be for any of the speakers tonight. Remember, those are part of the rules for the public hearing. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, this is Brett Buckland representing Bowler Engineering. Uh, address is 211 Perimeter Center Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia. North. Um, and we also do have um, David Kirk um, with Troutman Pepper and uh, Mike Bailey representing uh, public storage. Um, I can go ahead and start the uh, presentation here for the applicant. And let's see if I can share my screen. Do you all have my screen? We do. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, so as um, was presented by staff. Uh, the proposed uh, project here is a an expansion of the existing public storage facility. Uh, the proposed use would be a three story um, climate controlled self storage facility of approximately a total of 105,000 square feet. Uh, and um, we are, you can see that we're located here on the access road adjacent to Camp Creek Parkway. Um, the provided uh, parking area is shown here. There is an existing uh, billboard with an easement here and an existing uh, retaining wall here. And I will turn it over to um, David Kirk with Troutman Pepper. Thank you, Brett. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is David Kirk. I'm with the law firm of Troutman Pepper Hamilton Sanders, 600 Peachtree Street, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you uh, here this evening as someone who's married to a planning commissioner uh, here in my city of Decatur. I know that it takes a lot of, of time and effort uh, to do what you do uh, for your community and, and it's certainly appreciated. I'd like to touch on a, a couple of things. As Brett indicated, we're asking for a special use permit to allow for the expansion uh, of our existing facility uh, there adjacent to Camp Creek Parkway. And 
and two uh, variances that, that are needed uh, for this project to move forward and that we believe uh, are justified. Uh, if you look at the staff report, for, most, for the most part, staff indicates we meet the criteria uh, for approval. Um, there are a couple of places where uh, staff indicates we fail to, to meet the criteria. However, those really are the places where we are asking for uh, a variance, those being uh, the variance to reduce parking uh, more in line with a what we would call a mini warehouse as opposed to a commercial storage facility uh, and uh, to reduce the, the distance between our existing facility here and another existing facility uh, that we own and operate uh, to the north, uh, as you see here, where Yes, if you go in a direct line, it's about 12, 1,255 feet. However, if you actually are, are traveling by the most direct route of travel uh, on the ground, on the road network, it's closer to 3,500 uh, square, or 3,500 linear feet, excuse me. Um, the approval of this, uh, this special use permit and the variance would provide an incentive uh, for us, obviously, to, uh, to reinvest uh, in this site, both through the, the addition of the, the new building and reinvestment in the existing facility. Uh, and let me emphasize just a few points uh, where um, we may respectfully and humbly um, disagree uh, with, with staff. Um, with regard to traffic, uh, staff uh, indicates that they're assuming the traffic will increase. And quite frankly, um, I think we have uh, looked at that, looked at the traffic generation uh, numbers that the Institute for Transportation Engineers publishes. And in fact, we will reduce the, the traffic um, significantly over what, uh, what is there now, what would be there in terms of a restaurant and a car wash uh, or some other commercial facility replacing the car wash. Uh, they have concerns about landscaping uh, we certainly can provide uh, uh, landscaping. As in fact, you can see on there, those green areas, there's uh, a substantial amount of landscaping that we're adding uh, over, over what is there now, which is virtually nothing. Uh, they have concerns about lighting and, and by all means, uh, the lighting would be adequate for this facility, but would be designed so as not to spill over uh, onto, exist, onto adjacent properties using uh, the appropriate lighting fixtures uh, that would uh, focus the, the lighting interior to the site. Uh, finally, the, the staff report indicates, uh, and this was new to us because the previous staff report indicated that we met all the requirements for uh, provisions for refuse and security and sanitation, emergency services, those sorts of things. Um, we're gonna provide all that. Obviously we have provisions in place for, uh, for, for waste collection uh, and, and uh, removal. We have a dumpster there. If you look at the lower left um, of, the, of the parking area, uh, the property will be fenced uh, and, and gated and has, um, uh, has adequate water and sewer facilities. We have an existing facility there and we're, we would be uh, on city or on municipal water and sewer. Uh, and finally, uh, as far as emergency access, uh, we provide that as we do with all our facilities by coordinating with, uh, with fire and, and police so that they would have access to the facility uh, at all times, whether that's through a, a, what's called a Knox box or, or some, other, some other means. Um, at, our, at the work session um, uh, recently, there were uh, questions brought up about, about uh, the parking. I'm gonna hand things back to Brett uh, because together with the folks at Public Storage, uh, he's put together a chart, which uh, I hope was provided to you by staff uh, in terms of a, a letter that explains uh, those issues. And I'll hand things back to him. Uh, and at the end of our, our remarks, be happy to answer any questions and of course, um, reserve any time we might have remaining. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, th thank you, David. Um, 
yeah, I know we've we've talked about this project a few times um, with you with you all, and um, this did seem to be the the largest concern coming from the work session. So we did want to devote a little bit of time um, to this. So um, in this uh, letter that we prepared and uh, it sent over yesterday, I know um, I'm not sure how many of you had had the chance to really um, dive in and review that. But um, we compared 10 other uh, comparable or comparable facilities um, that public storage owns in the Atlanta metro area. Um, in general, you can see that they averaged approximately the same amount of rentable square footage as our proposed um, expansion. Uh, the number of proposed units averaged to be almost exactly the same. Um, but the parking was about 40, the average um, amount of parking at these facilities is about 40% uh, less than we are currently uh, proposing. Um, and the ratio of rentable square foot to um, uh, number of parking spaces and the number of units um, per parking space are both uh, significantly higher in the comparable facilities um, compared to what we are proposing. Um, so just wanted to, you know, from a um, business perspective, and we, we do have Mike Bailey here with public storage as well, if you do have any questions um, when we get to that, um, you know, it doesn't make sense for public storage to not provide enough parking um, if tenants or users are, you know, constantly trying to find a parking space whenever they're visiting, um, you know, that's not going to be a good business model for them. And, you um, and then I also wanted to prepare or show a, a little small um, comparison to some of the surrounding municipalities um, and what their parking requirements would be for a similar type of use. Um, should be noted that the city of East Point and the city of South Fulton's um, requirements regarding this and their zoning ordinances in general are very similar, if not almost exactly the same. Um, but for the other municipalities here, all of them would require um, significantly less than the 52 par 53 parking spaces that are um, required for this proposed project. And um, I think, like I said, I think that generally covered most of the um, concerns that had been uh, previously raised at the work session. Um, but if anyone has any questions, um, once we get to that section of the um, meeting, we're definitely um, willing to answer and, and hopefully um, you know, appease any concerns there. Thank you, Mr. Buckland. Thank you, Mr. Kirk. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this zoning matter? Any other proponents here to speak in favor? Are there any opponents here to speak against this zoning matter? Are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning matter? And staff, would you please help me out here as I am not able to see um, perhaps everyone. Yes, Chairman, we have one attendee and I have asked them to unmute. Okay. And receive no response. Okay, all right. Commissioners, seeing and hearing no other no additional proponents and no opponents for this zoning matter at this time, I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner Presley that we close the public hearing for case number 2022, you as an umbrella, dash 001-04 with the concurrent variance 2022. V is in Victor, C is in Charles, dash 001 dash 04. All in favor sound aye. 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 All, op all opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation for this agenda item? Okay. If you're not speaking, would you please mute? All right, staff recommendation um, for case 2022, U as an umbrella dash 001 04. Staff recommends to deny the applicant request as well as the um, concurrent variance case number 2022, V as in Victor, Z as in Charlie dash 001 04. Staff recommends to deny their applicant's request as well. Okay. 
All right. Commissioners, we've heard from the applicant and we've also heard staff's recommendation. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve staff recommendation for denial. Okay, it would be in the form of a recommendation. Is that correct? Well, well, it's a concurrence by variance. Variance is on us, so we need to probably take a one, one uh, separate because one's a special use and the other one is a variance. Right, so we can definitely split those up. Is that your uh, pleasure, Commissioner Fan? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Okay, so as it relates to case number 2022, you as an umbrella dash 001 dash 04, the special use permit. Um, and I've got a hand now from our attorney, um, Ms. Wiggins. If you would, Madam Attorney, please unmute and you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So it's my understanding. <laughs> with the concurrent variance along with the special use permit, they will travel together both to council as opposed to the variance stopping here and the permit going forward um, because they're interrelated. Um, and Ms. Smith can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding from the process. That is, that is my understanding as well. Okay. So um, thank you um, for the opinion on that. And I know that previously we have separated, but I understand the rationale for it to be a concurrent variance that it will travel together. So Commissioner Fan, um, most, hearing my that- My motion is to recommend denial for both the special use and the variance. Okay, is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Fan, second and by Commissioner Joseph Fields that this body recommends denial of case number 2022U is an umbrella dash 001 dash 04 with the concurrent variance of 2022V as in Victor C as in Charles dash 001 dash 04. Commissioners, at this time, any comments, questions, or concerns of the applicant or of staff? Okay, hearing none, commissioners, the, motions, the motion on the floor is to recommend denial. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. 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 Okay, we've got two nays. Um, so we'll have to do a roll call vote. So staff, would you please um, sound roll call vote? Commissioner Fields, could you please mute? Joseph Fields, please. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. And Ms. Solomon, I will go last. Okay. Commissioner right. Presley. Nay. Commissioner Fan. Aye. Commissioner Lovett. Aye. Commissioner Mark Fields. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Nay. Commissioner McKnight. Nay. Commissioner Bryant. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Joseph Fields. Commissioner Fields, you're muted. Oh, aye. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Yes. So we've got five ayes and one, two, three nays. Correct. So motion carries. So this body recommends denial. Our next agenda item is new business. Case number 2022U as an umbrella dash 001-06 with a concurrent variance. 2022V as in Victor C as in Charles dash 001-06. The applicant is South Central 50 Partners LLC and the applicant's representative is Mr. Hale Buckley Esquire. Um, staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Good thing, Mr. Chairman. Give me one second. All right, so for new business, item number one, case number 2022, you as an umbrella dash 001 06, also concurrent variance 2022, Vez and Victor, says in Charlie, dash 001 
1-800-273-5506, applicant South Central 50 Partners, LLC, and Mr. Hera Buckley. The address is 2251 Severn Road, and the description is, applicants seek special use permit for the continuation of a newly non-conforming warehouse development. Applicant also seeks a concurrent advance for parking, setback requirements, and outdoor storage, case type of the special use permit, as well as a concurrent variance. Thank you, Mr. Singletary. Um, at this time, I didn't open them. Oh, commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to open a public hearing. Mr. Chair, motion to open the public hearing, please. Is there a second? Second, second. It's been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Bryant, that we open the public hearing for this agenda item. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing on the ayes have the public hearing is now open. Mr. Buckley, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're now muted. Start over again. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Okay. I had unmuted. I don't know why it spontaneously remuted me. Um, I'm Harold Buckley, 2849 Tasis Ferry Road in Atlanta. Uh, I'm here before you on behalf of the applicant South Central 50 Partners, um, which is seeking the use permit and concurrent variances that Mr. Singletary just read into the record. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Uh, on the screen, you can see the site, which is here. Uh, at 2251 Sylvan Road, and it is bordered on the east by Sylvan Road, to the north by Millage Street, to the west by Harvester Street, and to the south by Oakley Drive. Uh, it is developed with a warehouse, uh, uh, industrial warehouse complex that has been on this site uh, since the mid-1950s. Uh, when it was constructed, it was fully compliant with all regulations that were in effect at that point in time and remained so in terms of the warehouse use, at least, until uh, late 2020 when the East Point City Council amended the zoning ordinance to convert warehouses on industrially zoned properties from uh, big permitted principal uses by right to special uses that require the city council's approval of a use permit, which caused this facility, the use of this facility to become legally non-conforming. Um, which as a general proposition is fine because the zoning uh, uh, ordinance allows legally non-conforming uses to be continued uh, with certain limitations, uh, but it also imposes two lapse triggers on non-conforming uses where if they suffer catastrophic damage or if they go dark for a period of time, uh, then their non-conforming status lapses. That imposes a, a hardship on uh, warehouse owners like my client uh, because it makes it very difficult to, number one, uh, make changes to the property that are necessary as you know their business needs evolve. But the second, uh, uh, liability, which is by far the more significant one, is the fact that it is very difficult to get financing on a piece of property where the collateral for the loan could literally go up in smoke. Uh, and so what that does is it makes it much more difficult for the owner of a non-conforming use to uh, perform significant maintenance and renovations on their property. Uh, we are also asking for concurrent variances to uh, reduce the setbacks to match the setbacks on the existing buildings, uh, to reduce the minimum parking requirement to match the number of parking spaces that we currently have on the site, and to allow outdoor storage uh, to be on the property uh, and not in a rear yard. The reason that we're asking for the outdoor storage variance is that this property literally doesn't have a rear yard. So on any side, if you try to put the outdoor storage behind the building, it is still for zoning purposes going to be in front of the building. So it is literally impossible for us to comply with that zoning restriction. Um, the reason that this has come up at this point in time is that the 
uh, South Central uh, 50 Partners uh, is preparing to embark on improvements to the property uh, because they have uh, signed a, a lease with Netflix uh, to occupy about 20% of this facility. And they have been approached by one or two other uh, entertainment businesses similar to Netflix, uh, who I can't name, who also have shown an interest in being at this location. Um, <clears throat> we have seen the conditions recommended by the planning staff, and uh, we do not have, I'll start with the, the second recommended condition, uh, striping the parking lot is not a problem. We plan to resurface the parking on the site anyway. Um, the third condition uh, where they recommend or, or they want a condition requiring screening in the form of enhanced landscaping or fencing, uh, that's not a problem for us either uh, because uh, we are planning to install uh, screening mesh uh, on the fence anyway. Uh, the, the mesh screening that I'm talking about uh, is the type that you see on construction sites that you know, show pictures and, you know, coming soon sorts of images and going all the way back to the, the Centennial Olympic Games, uh, the Olympic Committee used mesh screening uh, to screen the interior of many of its venues. So we don't have a problem with that uh, condition. The, the fourth condition to remove the, the barbed wire from the property is not a problem. We are uh, perfectly happy to do that as well. Um, the first condition is a concern for us because it is, is very vague. Um, there's no way for us to know what beautify the building means. Uh, we will be making improvements to the building. Uh, one example is that we will be replacing the roof on the building completely uh, at a cost of a million dollars. We will also be improving the facades of the building. Uh, for example, we plan to paint the warehouse um, you know, not the metal uh, structures on the site, but the, the, the main warehouse building, we're going to paint it and make other improvements to the facades. Um, we just don't know how to comply with that first condition, which is a concern for us. And also, we noticed that the planning staff is recommending denial of our outdoor storage uh, variance request. Uh, the existing outdoor storage is simply accessory to the warehouse function. When shipping containers come in to this facility on the back of a truck, they're taken off the truck and they are sat on the ground uh, until they are placed on another truck and hauled away. Um, and so that is the extent of what we're calling outdoor storage. And we're simply asking to continue that uh, as a vital component of the warehouse use that we have on the property. Uh, ironically, if the outdoor storage uh, variance request is denied, it could have the inadvertent impact of making it harder for us to get financing to make improvements to the property that the planning staff has said it wants to see. So uh, with that, we respectfully request your support uh, and a recommendation of approval uh, to the city council. And with that, I will uh, stop talking and take questions if there are any. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Again, questions will only come after the public hearing. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of the zoning matter? Any other proponents here to speak in favor of the zoning matter? Hearing none and seeing none, are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning matter? Are there any opponents here to speak against the zoning matter? Staff, would you please help me with this as I, I won't know if there are any attendees here to speak for or against this matter. Sharon, I've asked the, the one resident if they would like to unmute. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm assuming and that we there's don't. no response. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um, commissioners, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second? second. It's been moved by Commissioner mm -hmm. Miller that we close the public hearing and seconded by Commissioner McKnight. All in favor sound aye. 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 aye.
All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation? Sure thing, Mr. Chairman. Trying to share my screen. Give me one second. All right, um, in case number 2022, U as an umbrella-001-06, staff recommends to approve with four conditions and the conditions are, number one, to beautify the building, building color, windows, doors, et cetera. Number two, provide a parking stripe, par provide parking striping on subject property to beautify the, the lots. Number three, provides provide screening in the form of a hand landscaping or fencing to shield the day-to-day -day operations from the view of the public. And number four, to remove barbed wire fence, fence from front yard or request a variance. In the case for the event concurrent variance 2022, visit Victor Susan Charlie-001-06. The applicant asks for uh, five variances, so staff broke them down to each uh, request. Request number one, 10-2154 off-street parking or loading area uh, layout construction and maintenance, staff recommends to approve. Number two, 10-2079 E2 development standards, minimum front yard setback, staff recommends to approve. Request number three from section 10-2150.8 A3 warehousing and storage, recommend, staff recommends to denial. Uh, number four, so from section 10-2079 A5D, automobile and truck, and truck sales, including retail parts sales and or tire store, staff recommends to denial. And the last request, all right, so from section 10 dash, um, 10, I'm sorry, from, from section 10-2079 A2A, lumber, hardware, and other building material established, staff recommends to deny. Thank you, Mr. Singletary. Commissioners, we've heard from the applicant's representative, Mr. Harold Buckley. We've also heard staff's recommendation um, for the various, um, for the special use permit, as well as the various variances. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair. Commissioner Miller. This is a mouthful, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion to approve staff's recommendation to approve the special use permit and approve the concurrent variances per staff recommendations and commissions and, and conditions. Okay, is there a second? Second. The move by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett, that this body recommends approval of the special use permit as stated by staff and the approvals of the concurrent variances and denials as stated by staff. That has been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Lovett. And I see that Commissioner McKnight has a hand raised. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the question that I have is when, um, under the conditions, under the beautify the exterior building, do we need to include um, getting approval by architectural review um, committee just so that can be a little bit more clear um, for the client so they'll know what beautify actually means. Do we need to clarify that? Um, yes, I think that Director Smith unmuted. I thought that you would speak to that. Um, yes. Yes, please. Yes, um, the, the architecture review board is um, specifically for the downtown architecture review for the, the CR district. Um, I'm not sure if we could extend a review through that committee on um, properties that are outside of that downtown overlay district. We would we would not be able to do that. Um, I think that it would be illegal for us to do that. But I will have Madam Attorney to also opine on that. And 
it's a very good question, Commissioner McKnight, because as I was sitting here and um, Mr. Pre Mr. Buckley was going over the presentation, my mind went to, I mean, obviously I am on this body and then there's the comprehensive development plan and then there's the GIC and there are all of these discussions about gateways into the city and all this other kind of stuff. Um, I am just really now of the belief that we should have an overlay. If we had an overlay mm -hmm. for Sylvan Road for this portion that included a proponent or a component regarding the, um, the zoning aesthetics, then that would be proper what Commissioner McKnight is requesting. Um, but I am putting this out for the record that staff explores an overlay for every single gateway into the city because um, I'm taking up someone else's time and I, I'm gonna come back to this. Madam Attorney, I've asked you to opine on the, the question regarding a review by the Architectural Committee. You're correct, uh, Mr. Chair, that that review committee is limited to their statutory authority of the downtown. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner McKnight, I hope that answers your question. Thank you, it was a great question. Yes, it does. And just my only concern is just, you know, it, um, Beautify can be very subjective. You know, um, I may want to, you know, white exterior of the building, they might think painting it red, you know, um, right. is beautifying the building. So. I was just wondering if there was just something that we could add or, um, you know, just what needs to be done just so it can be a little clearer. Right, absolutely. And the applicant has stated, the applicant's representative have stated that it is difficult for them because they don't know how to quite interpret that. So we can definitely come back to that condition. Um, Commissioner Fan, the floor is yours. Yeah, is that exterior or interior? I just, that's not really my question, but since, um... Commissioner McKnight asked that. Are we talking about beautification of exterior and interior? Exterior. Exterior only. Okay. My my question is, if we can go back to the recommendations uh, for the Nile, um, the staff, if you could bring those back up again. Okay. Yes, the staff summary of recommendations. Yes. The recommendations of the Nile. Um, in terms of the the outside story that Mr. Buckley talked about is 10 2079A5D. Uh, <clears throat> and you reference automobile truck sales, including um, parts and sales and tires or what have you. But I think Mr. Buckley said that, from what I heard, maybe I heard it wrong, is that he was saying if a truck, a, a truck had dropped, a trailer dropped off, uh, and is left there until it is removed, then that would be considered what they're considering that outdoor storage. And so I'm trying to see how this applies to the same thing that he's referencing. And maybe Mr. Buckley, you can explain that a little bit more for me and for others so that I want to figure see how this fits into that category, Mr. Buckley. Yes, sir, Commissioner Fan. Um, we uh, we personally don't consider uh, uh, having operable trucks on the property as being outdoor storage. Uh, one of the tenants in this facility is Hertz uh, HERC Heavy Equipment Rental. It used to be a division of Hertz Rent a Car until it was spun off about six years ago into a standalone corporation. Uh, but they do rent trucks at this location. And to the extent that for zoning purposes under the East Point zoning ordinance, that's considered to be outdoor storage, which it sounds like it does based on the language on the screen, uh, then we, we wanted to, uh, to include that in our variance request because we do have that existing tenant on the property uh, that leases heavy trucks. Uh, and also to clarify, when I said we were adding the, the mesh screening to the fence uh, on the property, um, this is a big piece of property. The perimeter is, is in excess of 320 feet around all four sides. Um, so the addition of the mesh screening that I talked about, I, I should have been more precise in my description, 
Uh, we're talking about adding that along the entirety of the Sylvan Road uh, frontage of, for this property and to extend that around the corner on both sides, uh, a distance of an additional 100 feet so that you know when you're driving down or walking down Sylvan Road, you see that screening, um, but the other sides of the block that our site comprises would not be uh, visible to anyone on that, that gateway uh, artery. Well, I'm just gonna go back in my memory. I, I believe we had some conversation a while back about trucks, uh, tractors, trailers, and and uh, in terms of um, the, the equipment that hurts is renting or selling uh, in that same corridor, and it was approved that that they could do it in this area. But now, yeah, I'm trying to figure out why are we looking at denying something that we looked a while ago we approved. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna reference that to you, Sean. We talked about that uh, before because I was saying we don't want to have tractors and trailers and people selling tractors and trailers. Uh, uh, I mean tractors uh, for farming. You may remember that I was saying that they, they, this is farm equipment, and, and it was approved that you know they could do it. But now we're talking about denial for something. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Uh, why are we denying this when they're already there? doing it. Okay. Um, thank you, Commissioner Fan. I, um, if you're speaking of under variance, the staff's recommendation, item number four, automobile right. and truck sales. Right. Okay. I, I may have missed that meeting. I don't remember approving automobile or truck sales. Oh, it was um, back. It was back. He's, he said, he's saying, did you say tractor, sir? Did you say that they, they were in tractor? They not rent for, those, but they don't sell those. Right. So we're right. talking about sales, though. It, that says sales. It right. doesn't say rental. That's what I'm saying. Right. Why would they deny what we, what we said that they could do? And now we're going to deny that. But we're not but, denying them the continuation of renting that heavy equipment. We are denying them. Well, let me go back. Staff's recommendation is not denying the applicant the ability to rent that equipment, staff's recommendation is denying the applicant the ability to sell that equipment, to, to sell automobiles and trucks. Okay, but it says, and it's listed as outdoor storage. It's listed as outdoor, it's listed as outdoor storage. So I'm trying to figure out how is that, help me to understand they'll, they'll rent them. So they're having them outside. So that's not selling, that's renting. So Correct. what's the difference? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out, this is sale, we're talking about rental. We're talking about two different things. So how are we gonna deny people from what they're already doing? But they're not selling currently. So staff is not recommending that they deny what they're currently doing. Mr. Buckley, help me, help me to understand Mr. Buckley. What, what, what you're saying that you want uh, in terms of this company that's already there that's providing this rental service. Thank you. Uh, yes, Commissioner Fan. We applied for this variance out of an abundance of caution because uh, it is correct that the, the code provision that we're looking at uh, covers automobile and truck sales, and it's silent with regard to uh, whether rental operations are operate, you know, must be operated under this same restriction. Um, and so it's not clear to us whether we're governed by this provision or not, but out of an abundance of caution, we're just asking for the variance to allow us to continue what we've been doing. We would even accept a condition saying that no sales would occur on the property, that the activity would be lim limited to the rental operation that is there today. Um, we, it, and, if, and if we get clarity that it doesn't apply to us, then we would not pursue that variance. We would withdraw it with the understanding that it doesn't apply to us. But in any case, if the variance, any, if any of these variances are denied, it wouldn't uh, stop us from doing what we're doing today. Um, because we could still go forward as non-conforming, just like we are today. It would just uh, 
denying it would keep us under those lapse provisions in the nonconforming use regulations that make it uh, a lot more challenging for us to finance improvements that we want to make to the property. And so that's why we're here with all of this to try to remove that impediment. Well, that, that's the only thing that I have a problem with is, is that that one provision in terms of the denial. So I just, that's, that's my point. That's the rest of it. I don't have a problem with, but the, that one, I just. Okay. So Mr. Buckley, okay, uh, Commissioner Fan, thank you so very much for that. If you would please do me a favor and lower your hand, I'd appreciate it. So Mr. Buckley, is it that you are interpreting number four under variance, automobile and truck sales to also include that of rentals? Because parenthetically it says retail parts sales and or tire store yes and the reason that we uh are looking at it that way is because substantively there is absolutely no difference between a truck sales operation and a truck rental operation the only difference is in the nature of the contract that are signed by our uh, our, our customers so it's not beyond the realm of reason for us, given the ex ex extreme similarity between those two types of business operations that this could be applied to our rental tenant. Okay, um, I'm gonna push back a bit, okay? Um, mm -hmm. in, in your previous life as, a, as an employee in the city of Atlanta's Bureau of Planning, yes, sir. there were, uses particularly for car lots, right? Yes. Okay. And so in that life, when you were wearing that hat, was there car rental establishments, were they allowed where car lots were not? Do you recall? No, Mr. Chair. Not, not to my recollection, Mr. Chair. Okay, because to me, those are two different functions and uses. And a part of that is it has to do with having vehicles out on display. It is, you know, changing those things out. It is the type of traffic. It is all of those things. And so I think of those as two different uses. Is that also sort of your mindset around those as well? Uh, well, that's the question. And, you know, in, in, when I was working in the Bureau of Planning and we came across a regulation like this that referenced uh, automobile and truck sales, but not automobile uh, and truck rental, that usually would call for an administrative interpretation of the zoning ordinance as to whether that use category included rental operations as well. And so that's what is concerning to me, that there could be a set, set of circumstances under which an administrative interpretation could be made to say, given the almost identical nature of the uses, rental falls under the umbrella of sales. But if that's not the case in East Point, then I would certainly accept uh, that interpretation uh, and, and, and withdraw that concurrent variance request. Okay, let me ask you this, uh, Mr. Buckley. So um, with number four, with staff recommending a denial for that particular mm -hmm. um, variance, and it speaks to mm -hmm. automobile and truck sales, um, the applicant, mm -hmm. South Central 50 Partners, will still be able to lease to Herc Rentals, correct? And they'll still be able to continue their business operations as uh, it is today, correct? Yes, Mr. Chair, subject to those lapse provisions in the nonconformity regulations. Okay, so they would still be able to do exactly what they're doing today. So my challenge is Sylvan Road is a gateway into the city. So for me to remove this denial 
Then if we were to remove that, and so we're saying that we were allowing automobile and truck sales just for the express purpose for Herc to continue to do what they do today, which we don't need to do, then they could also rent to Herc's rental car. And it's just a car lot full of cars all the time, correct? Uh, as a general proposition, yes, Mr. Chair, unless okay. this body impose the conditions restricting it to the current tenant. That's right. Correct. Thank you. All right. So with this denial for automobile and truck sales, Hurt can continue to rent its large equipment subject to the provisions yes. as a non-conforming use, correct? It does not negatively yes, impact the business operations of Hurt, correct? Not immediately, no, Mr. Chair. Okay, and how would it in the future? Uh, if the that tenant space were to burn, uh, and Herc were were you know unable to occupy it until we went through insurance and got the space reconstructed, then that part of our non-conforming status could lapse. Okay, but that would be the case for any of those uses that are non-conforming, correct? that are non-conforming private uses, right? That, that is, that's why we're here, Mr. Chair. Yes, okay, all right, thank you. So they can continue to do what they're doing. All right, um, any other questions, concerns from the commission? Okay, I wanna go to, Oh, can we also, Mr. Buckley, work with me on this, please? So I completely understand what you're saying. This particular lot is uh, has frontage on all four sides, Sylvan Road, Oakley, Millage, and I can't remember, I never really look at the name of that, um, that road that connects Oakley and Millage. Um, Harvest Street, Mr. Chair. What is it? Harvest yeah. Street. Barbara, okay. So it is. it has frontage on all four sides. For the sake of identifying a front, the address is Sylvan Road, correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, looking at that structure and from my architectural vantage point, I believe that when that structure was built, I believe that that was a big star was it a Big Star grocery store? Are you familiar with that? I think it may have been like the headquarters for a Big Star grocery store. That building was designed in such a way that it fronted Sylvan Road in all aspects of the building design. That, that portion of the, the, the property looks very different because there are bays along the millet side and there are bays along the Oakley side. And then also there's some things on the, the, the barber side, correct? I don't have personal knowledge of the history, but what you're saying makes sense to me, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we're gonna say that Silver Road is the front. Okay. Okay, um, so for the purposes of talking about backyards, um, my concern, my challenge is the screening. Um, again, Sylvan Road is a gateway into the city. And um, there's currently some screening at some places. Um, and this is for the record and for staff to follow up on. There are junkyards on Sylvan Road. That's illegal. I don't care how much screening they have up there. That's illegal those properties, those operations should be cited post haste immediately. For it to be a gateway into the city, I think that we have to, this, this, this particular site is of interest to me because this applicant, the, the owner has come before this body before, and there was a desire at that time for us to have them to, much like we made, Plymart across the street, which is now Impact Church, put up all of those big evergreens along Sylvan Road, because it's the front. It is. Just like we made them do that. We did not get to do that in this particular instance, 
And this site, again, is, is fronted on all four sides. But I think we need to have a bit more specificity, specificity around the screening. Um, because I don't want it to, there's outdoor storage, which looks like that's going to have to cease. Um, unless you continue to do your operations without doing any of these other things. Um, I'm concerned about the aesthetics and what it looks like being a gateway into the city. And so I think for us to just say a screening, um, I just think we need some specificity around that. So those Mr. are- Monsieur, yes, yeah, I want, I want, I want, you say the outdoor stuff have to cease. Uh, in terms of um, the rental operation, in terms of the rental, you're saying that it has to cease. I thought he said that as long as it was non-conform, as long as it was non-conforming use, they could still do what they've been doing. So I'm right. just trying to figure out what, what we're talking about here. Help me to understand, because okay. I, I want I want to vote I want to vote in the affirmative, but this is just something that I'm concerned about because we have a business that has been there that we approved them, it allowed them to do it, and now we. We have an L with something. I'm just trying to figure out what, what are we doing here. Yes. So, Commissioner Fan, just so that I am clear, um, and I hope that I said it earlier, I was not speaking to the the truck, the the equipment rental. I was speaking to the outdoor storage. And I okay. thought I said that. Perhaps yeah, I did. You did say outdoor storage. You said outdoor right. storage. So yeah. The okay. outdoor storage. Mr. Buckley understands what I, I mean when I correct Mr. Buckley, the outdoor storage. You talked about there are trailers that are that are brought there, they're 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 dumped until or they're land, they land there until a tractor picks them up again, correct? Yes, you are correct, Mr. Chair. And that would be different from the hurt rental, correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, yes. So those hold are two- on, Hold on for a minute, hold on for a minute. That's what I started off with. That's what I thought, that was my question in terms of the truck being out there and being picked in and leaving and then somebody coming back picked up. But I thought that's what we were talking about when Mr. Buckley was talking about the rental of the, the tractors and things. Uh, but that's what I thought. That that was that was my conversation. Uh what I started out with. I just want to be clear. So if we're talking about now no trailers and they can't drop off trailers, they can't leave them there so people can come back and pick up the trailers to, and and this is a warehouse. It is a warehouse. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out. I don't know what warehouse, and you're right, that used to be Colonial Stove uh, Warehouse. But the reality of it is, is you talk about the bays. The bays are there for dropping the stuff off and then picking uh, trailers to drop stuff off to pick up the deliver stuff for people to come back and 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 take the trailers or the empty trailers or bring more trailers to drop stuff off. So I'm just trying to figure out what we're doing here. That's all I'm, I'm trying to figure out. It's a warehouse. It's a warehouse. Mr. Fan, may I clarify? Mr. Fan, you're exactly correct. Um, Commissioner Fan, I'm sorry, you're exactly correct. It is a warehouse. And the reason that there were certain things passed before is because there are certain improvements that the city would like to see. And particularly in that area, we cannot get those improvements if we continue to allow business as usual. We want the entire area to come up. And if we go back to staff's recommendation, which is what's on the screen currently, and we look at their recommendations for the variance. I'm going to read these. Number three, warehousing and storage. That's very different from the rental. All outdoor storage must be in the rear of the principal structure and enclosed by opaque fence no less than eight feet in height. Automobile and truck sales, number four, including retail part sales and or tire store. All outdoor storage must be in the rear. So we're not saying that they can't do it. We're telling them where they can do it for the express purpose of making sure that we're having an aesthetically pleasing corridor, which is a gateway into our city. So staff is saying that those things must occur in the rear yard, not along Sylvan Road. We don't want that on Sylvan Road. Agree. I agree with you, man. I'm, I'm not in agreement with that. I'm just trying to make sure that he's able to do what he needs to do. That They can continue, continue business to as usual today. But, um, if they decide that they did not want to move forward with this. Commissioner Buckley, I mean, um, Mr. Buckley. <laughs> yeah. 
thank you for the battlefield promotion, Mr. Chair, but uh, I, I will uh, resign my commission. Um, I, I, I just wanted to clarify. I just wanted to clarify my understanding of what we were talking about in terms of outdoor storage. Um, and, and, and that's why I said I agreed that you were correct when you said that the, the shipping container storage was not the same as the truck rental, because after our uh, conversation about the rental activity, um, I, I got the impression that the restriction on automobile and truck sales did not apply to automobile and truck rental. So I thought that that meant that what we were talking about for outdoor storage was limited to the shipping containers. That is correct. That that is that is also my understanding. Those things I don't consider, and I don't think the staff, um, Director Smith, you can chime in. I don't think that that is what staff is considering storage, outdoor storage. Um, those that's a part of a rental business. That Correct. equipment, not the trailers, and Correct. any of the other outdoor things that would be stored outside. That's also my understanding. Yes. Is that does that clear it up, Mr. Buckley? Yes, Mr. Chair. That's what that's that was my understanding as well. Okay. All right. Um well, I'm good, Mr. Chair. We can move forward. Great, excellent. Thank you, Commissioner Fan. Um, we still have some ambiguity in condition number one in the special use permit. Um, staff, were you able to put some other meat around this bone, um, beautify the building? Can you give Mr. Buckley and so that he may then um, provide that information to his client in terms of what you're looking for as it relates to beautification of the building? Um, the intent of that of that condition was was purely aesthetic in the exterior of the building, and it could include uh, painting the facade and some of the other things that that Mr. Buckley stated. And if he's um, willing to restate some of the improvements that they were looking to do, we can put that into that condition number one. And I know that one of them was painting. And I don't know if it was window replacing, but it's purely aesthetic and improvements um, for the exterior of the building. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm happy to restate that uh, with Mr. Chair's permission. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Buckley, you have the floor. Okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we talked about was uh, uh, repainting the, uh, the main warehouse building, you know, not the metal, you know, portions of the building because that paint doesn't tend to do well over time on metal, especially in the hot sun. But on the other parts of the building, we are making paint improvements. We are resurfacing the parking lot and we're happy to restripe the parking lot as the planning staff has recommended in its conditions. Um, we're replacing the roof. That's not an aesthetic uh, uh, improvement because you can't see the roof from the street, but it certainly keeps the building in good working condition. Um, but those are the sorts of things that I, I, I raised as examples. Oh, and we're also talking about uh, making landscaping improvements. Uh, they won't be enough to screen the building, but they will improve the appearance of the property. Can you be a little more specific about that? Do you all have a landscaping plan, Mr. Buckley? Uh, we do not now, but we can put meat on that bones, but on that bone between now and the city council for uh, for sure. Okay. All right, a landscaping plan, an enhanced landscaping plan to to the staff for their review. We're approval. happy. We're happy to do that to, to yeah. go for administrative staff approval, review and approval. Okay, and Mr. Bucket, let me ask you this question. Um, You've been to the site, I'm sure. Um, this is your client. Um, and you are, are you familiar with the evergreens that are on the property just across the Oakley side, which is now Impact Church? It used to be Ply Martin before that. It was it was built as international paper many, many years ago. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I am. Okay. Um, do you think that your client would be opposed to um, some evergreens, some tall evergreens? Um, along that fits along Sylvan Road and a portion of Oakley and Millage? No, Mr. Chair, I don't think they would. 
Can we talk about spacing on that? What do you think your client will be comfortable uh, with? Uh, that is hard to say. I'm looking at the site as we speak. Um, I, I think that they would not have a problem planting those between the existing trees on Sylvan Road um, as a sort of a, a, a guide to spacing, but committing to a 10 foot, 20 foot, 30 foot on center, I'm not sure that I can do that with the information I have right now. Do we have uh, an image of um, the building facade from Sylvan Road? Um, I can share my screen, Mr. Uh, Chair. Oh, okay. there you go. Let's see it. Okay. Okay. So the far left photo, um, that is on the millage side, I believe. And um, Mr. Chair, I can look through our files to see, because um, we did visit the site and we did take a bunch of pictures. So I can look through those pictures to see if one shows the frontage um, on Silver Road. Okay, if you could do that, Mr. Singletary, I'd greatly appreciate it. Google too. And I wanna thank everyone for their patience on this. I know that it's a bit granular. I feel that it is very important. Um, and I wanna make sure that we get these things addressed, which also looks like um, if it is the will of this body that we will need to, who was that? Miller and, Love it. Is that right? Was it That's the motion correct. by motion by Miller, second by Love it? Yes. Okay, thank you. My memory's not as bad as I thought. Okay. Um and while Mr. Singertier is looking for that, are there any other um items? on the um, conditions that we might want to enhance or edit. Do we have lighting, a lighting plan um, when they were speaking of painting um, the building? I know in, in the term beautification, um, lighting always comes into play with exterior lighting or some type of lighting plan for the building, or it could be included in the landscaping as well. Okay. Yes, Commissioner. We can, we can put the conditions back up so that then we can we can weigh in and look at if there's anything else we want to do. Yes, if staff would please repost the conditions. Mr. Chair, um, I have did the Google search on Google Maps for the frontage um, for 2251 Silver Road. Okay. And I can show my screen for that or the conditions first. Okay, let's see. Let's see that image first, and then we can go to conditions. Okay. So this here is uh, on former Google Maps and stated this here is 2251 um, Silver Road. Okay. Now, Mr. Buckley, look at that. So this is, this is a part of that outdoor storage. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Let's, let's continue to scroll. Um, Mr. Chair, while we're in silence right now, I see your vision uh, in between the tree spaces that, uh, yes, some uh, ferns mm -hmm. and evergreens would definitely help that corridor. Correct. If Mr. Singletary, can you go across the street to Impact Church, please? And um, on the other side, it's on it's on uh, same side of the street, just across Oakley. I'm sorry. Um, Yes, okay, you see those evergreens? We conditioned yes, this sure. site. 
because this building was built as international paper and they sold this building to Plymart and they were going to be storing lumber materials. This is a gateway into our city. We wanted to screen this and we required these evergreens. What we have across the street at the subject site 2251 looks far worse than that lumber ever did. And this is a gateway into our city. Mr. Buckley, I want your, your client's property to look great. I will Those venture to say that none of them live in East Point. So they probably have less of an interest of it looking great because it's not in their neighborhood. But we need some evergreens along Sylvan and partially along Oakley and um, Millage. Oh. I understand, Mr. Chair, and uh, I, I wasn't pushing back on having the evergreens planted along Sylvan Road. Um, I was just trying to figure out a way to respond to your question about spacing and the best way that I could come up with it since we have uh, uh, street trees that have already been planted along that frontage is to place a new evergreen in between the trees that are already on uh, that frontage. Okay, let's go back across the street, Mr. Singletary. Okay, so those trees are spaced quite a bit apart. Um, you know, this is a, a large parcel of land and I understand that and I get that and I, Okay, staff, I hope y'all see all those junkyards across the street, they're illegal. Um, so I would like for there to be evergreens of a certain height, very similar to that height across the street that we just saw to be planted along Sylvan Road to hide all of that stuff that is so unsightly. If I wanted to relocate my business at East Point and drove into this gateway, I wouldn't want to come here. I would not. Um, Mr. Chair, um, yes. I have a suggestion. Um, although the architectural review um, board would not be able to, you know, influence um, or make a comment on in this particular case, maybe there's guidelines that they already have um, when it comes to design that we could use to, um, you know, like they may already have some guidelines that, that just could be applied. Right, I think that our challenge with that, I, I, I see where you're trying to go and Ms. Wiggins, Madam Attorney, I think you have to chime in. I think if we were to go back and hold them to that standard that we would not be able to do that because uh, it had not been stab established or codified by the city. And I hope that I'm saying that correctly, but Madam Attorney, you might want to. Certainly, um, Mr. Chair, I get what um, Commissioner McKnight is saying that look at the guidelines that they may have already established um, or have used um, and garner some ideas about what beautification may mean, about tree spacing. Hopefully I'm not misquoting you, Commissioner McKnight. And so we're not, um, I guess, making up um, stuff. We know that there are um, some guidelines out there that are, that are tried and true. So, I do, so if she's saying it to use it just as a place of reference for ideas, that's fine. But if you want to impose um, it as is, like, and just say what they have apply here, um, I, I would agree with you, Mr. Chair, that that would not be appropriate. The other thing we have to keep in mind is the, re, the architectural review board 
is for downtown because downtown has its own character, right? Where Sylvan looks, I mean, it's a different character. Um, so what she's saying may work. Maybe they have some ideas, but it may not because of the two totally different looks of the two areas. And I also just, um, and I see Commissioner Fan and Mr. Buckley, and I'll get to you guys in just one moment. Um, and, and Commissioner McKnight, I fully understand where you're coming from. And that is why I believe that we need to have an overlay. If we have an overlay for all of the, um, for all of the, um, the gateways into the city, in the overlay, we would have then the provision that would require that aesthetic and that review. And so we're sort of caught without having that. And I think it is really important for us to establish that. So I hope that staff has made a note of that and can present us with um, a, a plan to move forward with overlays for any of our gateways, because we really do need that. Um, and I don't want to pick on this particular applicant, but for me, this is very important because it is a gateway. Um, Commissioner Fan, and then Mr. Buckley. I, I just want to say, um, you know, after looking at those pictures, Mr. Buckley, and when we talk about outdoor storage, now I see why Commissioner Atkins is saying what he's saying because it's trucks everywhere. And you got pound trucks, you got all kinds of trucks out there. I'm, I'm thinking it just, you know, hurts from rental. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's so many trucks out there, it's a crying and a shame. That's, it, it's an eyesore um, to the community with all those trucks that you don't have uh, trucks that's leaving like that. I mean, that's, that's totally unacceptable. So uh, I want to say uh, I concur with you just looking at it. something visuals, uh, when you see the visuals, they change what you, how you're thinking. I'm just thinking rental of, of, of tractors. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I think that you need to put the ciphers up there. You need to be conforming with what they're doing and, and impact over there and make it look aesthetically better. And uh, whatever we can do in terms of uh, what Commissioner McKnight is talking about in terms of coming up with some definitive way that in terms of how it's going to look once it's painted. And we've gone through this architectural overlay thing for downtown. That was a nightmare years ago. So I don't know how we're going to do that, Sean, for the gateways, but that's something I think we, like you said, we should work on. But right. uh, I'm going to agree with you on that. Yes. Well, we have an overlay for Cleveland Avenue. We have an overlay for downtown. We have an overlay. We have an overlay for a few areas. So I think that we can create an overlay for the other gateways. Uh, Mr. Buckley, you have the floor. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair, I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know that I hear everything that this body is saying and I am taking your guidance to heart. Uh, and so basically it sounds to me like this is not a proposal that is ready to go forward yet because there is so much that is undefined and uncertain. So what I would do is uh, volunteer for a 30 day deferral to give us more time to come back to, to you all with something a lot more definitive now that we have the benefit of your feedback. Okay, um, thank you for that offer, Mr. Buckley. Um, our motion on the floor is um, by Commissioner Miller, second by Commissioner Lovett, is to recommend the, basically the recommendations of staff. And so if that is amenable to Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Lovett, um, that we allow the applicant to address some of our concerns or the concerns that we've discussed here and have an opportunity to work with staff on those things that we've discussed. Um, Commissioner Miller, would you, withdraw, with, would you withdraw your motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that I withdraw my motion. Okay, I don't know if you have a make a motion, but if you you, you withdraw, um, Commissioner Lovett, do you withdraw your second? I withdraw my second. Okay, thank you all. I appreciate both of you. And commissioners, at this time, I will entertain a motion. Um, the applicant has expressed a desire um, to defer this case till our regularly scheduled August meeting um, to allow them ample opportunity. Um, to address the concerns as we've discussed this evening. 
So Mr. If Chair, you, yes, Commissioner Fan. I make a motion that we give the uh, African a 30 day deferral to uh, be in our next meeting in uh, August. Okay. I second that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, there's a motion by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner Presley, that we defer this case to our regularly scheduled August meeting. Any comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing on the ayes have it. This item is deferred to our August, um, our regularly scheduled August meeting. Thank you. Thank everyone. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. Um, our next agenda item, 2022 via and Victor-002-06. Applicant is Mr. Roger Hill. Staff, would you please sound the caption for this agenda item? Sure thing, Mr. Chairman. Let's share my screen now. All right, for the second, for the second item for the new business, 2022 V as in Victor dash 001. I'm sorry, 002 dash 06. The applicant, Mr. Roger Hill, located at 2870 Randall Street. The applicant seeks variance from Article J infill section of the zoning ordinance to build home large and allow the maximum square footage. And the various type, I'm sorry, the case type is a variance. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, at this time I entertain a motion to open the public hearing for 2022 V as in Victor dash 002 dash 06. Motion to open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Joseph Fields, seconded by Commissioner Miller that we open the public hearing for this agenda item. All in favor, sound aye. 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 All opposed, sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now open. Is Roger Hill the applicant present this evening? Roger Hill is not present this evening. He has recommended, uh, recommended to uh, withdraw his application. I mean, he has uh, made a request to withdraw his application. Right, right. Are there any other proponents here to speak in favor of this agenda item? Hearing none and seeing none. Are there any opponents here to speak against this agenda item? Hearing none and seeing none. Commissioners, at this time, I entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Presley. Well, oh, seconded by Commissioner Fields, Joseph Fields. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's been moved by Commissioner Lovett, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields. that we close the public hearing for 2022 via and Victor 002 06? All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. The public hearing is now closed. Staff, would you please sound your recommendation? Staff recommends to accept the applicant's request for. Withdrawal. And uh, all right, commissioners, um, we have received notification via email um, that the applicant has requested a withdrawal and Director Smith has also sounded that in this meeting. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Ms. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Fan. I think Ms. Wiggins had a hand up. I think she wanted to say something before we moved to the motion. I did see that, and then she lowered it, okay. and so then I thought that she was fine. Okay. Madam um, Attorney? I'll, That's correct. I am fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. All I, right. Want make, I want to make a motion that uh, we accept his withdrawal. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Fan, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields that we accept the applicant's request to withdraw. Any comments, questions, or concerns? All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none, the ayes have it. Motion carries. Our next agenda item are announcements. Staff, um, Director Smith, do you have any announcements that's good for the body? Um, the only announcement is that the uh, city council has, they, they have voted to go back to in-person meetings for August uh, due to the numbers going up. Um, that may be, you know, it may last for August. It may change in September, but just wanted to make you, this board body aware to start thinking about in-person meetings um, if that's the will of this body. But because they made that determination, 
Planning Commission does not automatically follow um, automatic in-person meetings. So it would, be, it would be determined by by you all. Okay. I did see that it was on the agenda for our work session um, for last week, and I know that I had to get off at a certain time. And so I would like for us to have some discussion around that. If we can add that to the work session agenda for August, I'm very happy to have those discussions. But uh, yes, cases are going back up, and I just want us to have sort of a wholesome and comprehensive discussion around that. Absolutely. Any other announcements from Director Smith or her great team? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Um, Chair? Yes, Commissioner Miller. I would just like to put my input on this as the cases are going up and um, the variant is much more dramatic than even the uh, first Omicron variant. Uh, I would suggest that we kick this can down the road a couple months. I mean, I know this is, I know that we need to discuss it, but my vote would be no. Right. Uh, I, I think that that sentiment, I am assuming that that sentiment is probably um, the consensus. Um, I, the reason that I would like for it to be on our work session for August, for us to go ahead and establish that we want to do this or we don't want to do this, I think that the sentiment is that we, we are okay in conducting the meetings as they are um, so that we have formally discussed it and come up with how this body feels about those things. And we can sail on into the rest of the year and however long doing what we feel we need to do to keep ourselves protected. Okay. Um, if there are no other announcements, <laughs> um, I have an announcement, Commissioner Fan. so I'm gonna hold on that. I've not yet asked for a motion for adjournment. Um, if I could, we received, we being this body, the commissioners, we received an email from Mr. Buckland with the um, public storage application. And I am not sure if it is a part of the literature that comes out of the Office of Planning and Community Development, but um, it is my estimation that it is improper for applicants to reach out to commissioners directly those things should be funneled through the staff. So if it's not a part of any of the literature that goes from the office, could staff please add something that informs all of the applicants that if they have a desire to provide any documentation to the commission, that they do so through staff. My concern with that is Mr. Buckland could have sent that to me and the vice chair, but not the other commissioners. And then therefore the other commissioners are not privy to that information. We should all be privy to the same information at the same time. Um, and so um, that also may mean that if the staff is sending out an email that they do not copy the applicants on that so that they won't have the benefit of just doing a reply all and get to us. Obviously our emails are public should be, I guess, but anything that the applicant would like for this body to have, it should be funneled through the staff so that we can all get it at the same time. Okay. Absolutely, sir. Um, that's the only other announcement that I have. And so at this time, commissioners, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, sir. Is there a second? Second. Second. Been moved by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Joseph Fields that we adjourn. All in favor sound aye. 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 All opposed sound nay. Hearing none. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.